Episode 61, Choices Are Made. You don't have to tell me. Emma didn't really care, but the thought of Eric putting all of this into helping someone else made her slightly uneasy. Joy rushed through Eric as he saw her head lower slightly. He couldn't help but smile as he asked, Are you jealous? A little bit, Emma admitted, nodding her head. Do you really think anyone else could even come close to you? There's only you, no one else. Eric pulled her onto his lap and wrapped his arms around her as he showed her how to read over the contract. Emma was smart when it came to most things, but looking over wordy contracts made her head hurt. It wasn't long before she fell asleep in Eric's arms, a slight smile on her face. He held his wife as he continued to look over the contracts. Although he was tired, he was happy. He leaned over and whispered in Emma's ear, The day you become New York's top model again will be the day I become your personal manager. Emma, being a light sleeper, heard him and responded sleepily, Then I guess I need to work harder. Eric let out a gentle laugh. After looking over the 20 to 30 contract proposals again, he picked out the one from Top Trends Quarterly. Of course, Global would definitely have an opinion regarding his decision, as TTQ wasn't considered a best-selling magazine. But TTQ's target audience were fashion designers and upper-class consumers. He knew that, right now, Emma's best strategy was to get on board with current and upcoming trends to promote herself to top designers and other influencers in the industry. It was a risk, but a calculated one. If things worked out as he planned, then Emma's shows would be guaranteed for the rest of the year. As long as the shows maintained plenty of exposure and the magazine followed, a beneficial relationship would be formed. More importantly, appearing in shows would give her more endorsement opportunities and keep her from relying solely on her team at Global. We'll make this happen. I'm not going to let it fall through, he thought determinedly as he lifted Emma up and carried her through to bed. The next morning, when Emma woke up, she was a bit surprised when Eric placed the TTQ contract in front of her. Do you trust me? he asked as he wrapped his arms around her. She squeezed his tired cheeks and planted a kiss on his lips. I'll go with this one. You're not going to ask why. Eric had come up with several reasons to explain his choice, thinking that he'd have to convince her. It never occurred to him that she would trust his decision right off the bat. The head honcho of the entertainment industry stayed up all night to pick this out for me. I'm willing to at least try, Emma said, wrapping her arms around his neck as he looked at her in surprise. In a serious tone, she said, First of all, I trust you completely. Second of all, I've looked at all these contracts too, and not one of them felt like it really fit the person I am now, or the future I'm working toward. I can make the small plans, but I need you to help me see the bigger picture. Eric could feel his ego swelling. As long as Emma needed him, he'd do anything for her. Then it's decided. We'll go with the TTQ contract he said decisively. I don't have a manager anymore, just an assistant, so I'll have to negotiate all my deals personally. ISN still has a few things they need me to finish, and Linda has one more cover she wants me to shoot. Luckily, she's sending someone here, so I won't have to fly back to Mexico. Eric ran his fingers through her hair, admiring her confidence as he smiled and said, Give me your email login. When I have time, I'll help you discuss your options. Eric, you promised you wouldn't interfere with my business. I haven't given you any of my resources, money, or contracts. As your husband, can't I share in your responsibilities just a little? He flashed his most winning smile, and she nodded her head and replied, Okay, but just this one. Decisions made, the couple got out of bed and enjoyed their breakfast. However, just as Emma was about to leave the house, she received a phone call from Lisa. Amps just received an invitation from the organizing committee of the Top 10 Model Awards. The whole company's buzzing about it. When's the award ceremony? Emma asked, 
though her question held a deeper meaning. In ten days, Amber's going to be unbearable the whole time. You wonder how she managed to bribe the judges, Lisa said, unable to hide her curiosity. Do you think she did something behind Nathan's back? I'm sure Nathan is wondering the same thing. Surely he can't help being a little bit curious about this turn of events. Emma maintained her calm tone as she said, Let her be happy. After all, it'll only be for the next ten days. After the ceremony, Amber will no longer exist in the modeling industry. Lisa replied grudgingly, I suppose we can manage it for a few days. Her tone brightened again as she added, Oh, one more thing. The organizing committee has invited you to be a guest presenter at the award show. Great news. Okay. I'll be dropping by the office in a bit. According to the supplementary contract, she had to present the TTQ proposal to the higher-ups at Global before she could sign up to it. She had a bad feeling they wouldn't be happy with her decision. In that case, I'll come pick you up now. Amber's here at the office, walking around like she owns the place. Emma laughed humorlessly. Half an hour later, Lisa arrived in Tribeca in a company car. Eyeing Emma's glowing face, she couldn't help but tease. The dashing CEO has been treating you well, I see. Be serious, Emma said, cheeks turning red as she got in the car. Lisa laughed as she pulled back onto the road. Now that Ashley's out of the picture, Global's probably going to start interviewing new managers for you. What do you plan to do about that? I don't need a manager, Emma said, shaking her head. I can negotiate my own contracts, and you can be in all the meetings with me and help me out. Are you sure we're able to do it all ourselves? Lisa was doubtful. Even though Emma was willing, she didn't imagine Eric would just let them get on with things without his oversight. Emma sighed. She had no choice but to tell her the truth. I can't hide anything from you. Eric is helping me out. Wow, seems like he's getting more and more impressive by the minute. I'm telling you, Emma, you're not using him to his full potential, Lisa said with a grin. A few minutes later, Lisa parts, and she and Emma chatted and laughed as they walked toward the global offices. But as they stepped into the building, Emma immediately felt a different vibe than normal. She wanted to see Nathan, but his secretary told her he was currently in a meeting. Lisa went to look, but she didn't see anyone in the main meeting room. They could both hear a woman's laughter coming from Nathan's office. Emma sneered, but she didn't want to make things difficult for the secretary. Looks like Nathan and the others are inside celebrating and don't want to see me. Episode 62, Corporate Sabotage No one was happier than Mia at the news that Amber's career had been revived. It worked in her favor, since she wanted nothing more than to control and destroy Emma. She'd originally given up on Amber, but she'd somehow managed to turn the tables and win a top ten model award while Mia and Emma were squabbling amongst themselves. Congratulations, Amber. As one of the award winners, you've been invited to the Model Elections Bright Night Gala. Famous artists from all the major companies will be in attendance along with plenty of industry contacts. You'll need to make the most of this opportunity. There's also rumors that a special guest will be there that night. Of course, Emma is also invited, but... Mia held up Emma's invitation letter and tore it in half. Don't think she'll be able to make it, she said triumphantly. Mia, do you think that's a good idea? Nathan asked, leaning on the edge of the table. He couldn't help laughing mockingly as he looked down at Emma's torn invitation. If the organizers ask, we'll just say she deliberately chose not to show up. She may have been the company's top model before, but a high-class bitch is still just a bitch, Mia said firmly with a sinister look on her face. Emma may not let them interfere with her jobs anymore, but that didn't mean they couldn't still plot against her. After all... She still belonged to the company. Event organizers always contacted the company directly, not the artist. After Mia left, a victorious smile on her face, silence fell between Nathan and Amber. Finally, Nathan spoke up. Amber, 
Don't you think the judge's decision was a bit strange? Amber froze, an uneasy look sweeping across her face briefly before she managed to hide it. Did Emma say something to you? Stop trying to shift the focus back onto Emma every time something happens to you. Did you do something behind the scenes to influence any of the judges? Nathan asked, looking at her with a disheartened expression. He lifted her jaw and looked straight into her eyes as he continued. I'm more familiar with the darkness in this industry than you will ever be. I almost involved my mother because of you. If you betray me, our relationship is over. Nathan, I'm just as surprised as you that I won the award, Amber said, forcing herself to remain calm and act normal. I'd hate to find out you've done something unethical behind my back. Emma and I are at this point because of you, so don't you dare betray me. I'm pregnant with your baby. I'd never do anything so reckless. Their unborn baby was still her ultimate ace in the hole. He studied her face intently for a few more moments before making his decision. Fine, I trust you. If God wanted to destroy someone, all he had to do was make them do crazy things. And Amber was the craziest. Amber had no idea she was playing with fire. She was too busy dreaming about standing on the stage and accepting her award. Global made some changes to their upcoming jobs once they were notified of Amber's status as an award recipient. Nathan gathered all the company's higher-ups for a meeting and told them that Emma had lashed out at Mia, threatening to cancel her contract. He wanted them to focus on Amber and other newcomers instead of Emma. The rest of the team had no choice but to accept his suggestions once he told them that Emma was planning on leaving sooner or later. While Nathan was having his meeting, Emma was shooting the ISN commercial. After the shoot was done, Lisa quickly approached her with a jacket, covering her up. Now that the shoot is done, do you want to go back to Global and discuss the TTQ contract with Nathan? I don't want to talk about TTQ right now, Emma replied. There was no way Global would be lenient with her now that Amber had won that award. Global's higher-ups were focused on profits, and TTQ posed too much of a risk. It would definitely be rejected if she tried to present it now. Emma, you have to be careful. Mia, Nathan, and Amber are working to get rid of you. Who knows what they'll do behind your back? Lisa helped her remove her makeup and change back into her own clothes then slowly escorted her out of the studio, waiting as she interacted with the fans standing outside the set. I just need to stay out of their way until the award ceremony, Emma said, smiling. Should we find evidence proving that Amber bribed the judges? Lisa, it wouldn't be beneficial for us to do that. We'd risk offending the judges and hurting our cause. I'm sure that's exactly what Nathan wants. Let's not risk it. We already hold her life in our hands. There's no need to do anything else. Emma had thought everything through carefully. If Amber was brave enough to do something like this, then she could certainly be prepared. Was she even brave enough to betray Nathan? What else is she willing to do, she wondered. There was no need to stop Amber from accepting her award. After all, she would still succumb to their plans in the end and descend into an abyss of her own making. Where should we go now? Let's go to Kaleidoscope. We can pick up Eric from work, Emma said, eyes twinkling. Now that she'd finished work, all she wanted to do was be with her husband. Lisa smiled slightly. The relationship between Emma and the big boss improved by the day. She couldn't help but be happy for her. Since it was only 5 p.m., Emma and Lisa went to the cafe across the street from Kaleidoscope. Once they'd sat down, Emma sent Eric a text. After work, please come to the hotel across the street. I want to have dinner with you, Mr. Roberts. Eric had just finished an extremely long meeting when he saw the text come through, and he immediately replied, Do you want to come up and keep me company in my office? It'll grab everyone's attention if I come up there. It's best if I don't. 
Despite her text, she actually wanted to go. She wanted to see how grand her husband's office was. After all, he wasn't such a big name in the industry for nothing. Come to the lower level garage. I'll have Luke bring you up through the secret entrance. Kaleidoscope wouldn't be the entertainment empire they were if they didn't have ways of ensuring client confidentiality. In that case, wait for me. I'm on my way. Emma put on her coat and headed to the company's private garage with Lisa, where Luke was already waiting. Lisa, not wanting to be a third wheel, excused herself while giving Emma a glancing smile. Luke then escorted Emma through the secret entrance and up to the CEO's office on the 42nd floor. Ma'am, just let Mr. Roberts know any time you want to come to the office and we'll come get you. You don't need to worry about privacy at Kaleidoscope, he said. The entire staff signs an NDA when they're hired. If anyone breaches their contract or spreads gossip, there's a million-dollar fine. It's a pretty convincing deterrent to stop anyone from saying anything, no matter what they see or hear. Of course, Carrick would rule his empire with an iron fist, she thought, amused. Episode 63 Plots Come to Light The elevator went directly to Eric's office, so Emma didn't have to worry about running into any of Kaleidoscope's staff. She was relieved when she saw Eric's huge office as soon as she stepped off the elevator. The office's decor was different from the Spanish palace-style vibe at home. His office was decorated in a minimalist style, with angular metal furnishings that represented his efficient, concise, and dignified approach to work. The office gave off an air of respect and power to anyone who entered. The man behind the desk was currently focused on signing the documents in front of him. Emma thought the mole on his right earlobe made him seem reliable and sexy, especially when paired with his serious expression. While she was admiring him in work mode, Eric lifted his head and noticed her. Go take a seat on the sofa, Eric told her gently before turning to Luke. Go prepare some English black tea and pastries. Also, grab a blanket on your way back. Yes, sir. Emma watched as Eric quickly signed all the documents on his desk before he walked over to sit beside her. Why didn't you bring Lisa up? She said she didn't want to be a third wheel. Luke entered the office with the pastries, tea, and blanket. He handed the blanket to Eric, who immediately covered Emma's legs with it. The air conditioner's a bit strong. She smiled and nudged him. Don't let me distract you. Go finish your work while I enjoy the view. The view? Yes, I love watching you work. Eric smiled, then got up and returned to his desk. Emma wanted to keep him company, but she was so tired. She watched him for a while before leaning against the sofa and falling asleep. Eric walked over to the sofa and repositioned her body so she was laying horizontally on the sofa, placed a pillow under her head, and covered her with a blanket. Various staff members, including Luke, Eric's secretary, and other board members walked in and out of his office. Everyone was shocked when they walked in and saw Emma sleeping on the couch. They left Eric's office wondering who she was and what his relationship was to her. The bosses take it. Who is that beautiful woman in the boss's office? I can't believe she was brave enough to fall asleep in his office. He looks at her with such a gentle, loving expression. Oh my God, this is huge. The staff weren't allowed to gossip thanks to their contracts, but they were dying to find out more about the woman in Eric's office. Who was she? How did she get the boss's attention? Was she famous? Emma was sleeping peacefully and had no idea her presence was throwing Kaleidoscope into a frenzy. Eric finally finished his work around 8 p.m. and carried Emma out of his office, taking the elevator down to his Rolls Royce. She woke up after he placed her in the car and gazed at him sleepily. Did you get everything finished? Yes. What would you like to eat? He asked her as he started the engine. You pick, she responded, tilting her head and wrapping her arm around him as she went back to sleep.
Curious staff members gathered around and watched Eric's sports car drive out of the garage. They may not be allowed to gossip about the woman with him, but they still wanted one last look, even if it was a little blurry. They all had one thing on their minds as they watched the car drive away. Who was the woman their boss cared so much about? Ute decided to cook rather than take Emma to a restaurant. She watched him for a minute before walking up and hugging him from behind. You're so good to me. You're easy to take care of. A simple dinner touches you and puts a smile on your face. Emma's hand slipped under his shirt and caressed his muscular chest. I'm hungry, Eric. Dinner's almost ready. I'm hungry for you, not food. Without a word, Eric stopped what he was doing, turned around, and picked her up, carrying her out of the kitchen. He had a request to fulfill. What his beautiful wife wanted, she got. Later that night, the news was covering the upcoming Bright Night Gala. It was in three days. Eric glanced at the TV briefly before looking down at Emma, who was lying in his arms. I looked at the guest list for the gala. It looks like you and Amber were both invited. The Bright Night Gala? Emma lifted her head, confused. Clearly, Global had no intention of telling you about it. I had a feeling you weren't supposed to find out. Eric's voice lowered as he studied Emma's reaction. The annual Model Awards was one of the biggest events of the year. The Bright Night Gala was only part of it. The awards, which were usually given to the most famous models in the industry, was the highlight of the event. About 80% of the winners were models from Kaleidoscope and Star King. Emma straightened, trying to release her body's sudden tension. Eric noticed her reaction and quickly stroked her hair, soothing her. I think you should remain clueless. Don't tip your hands. Let them think they've won, and on the night of the gala, I'll arrange for both a car and a red carpet escort. You've considered all the possibilities and knew they would try something like this. Don't let it upset you. Emma slowly calmed and nodded her head, agreeing. I don't know what I'd do without you. Their plan probably would have worked if not for you. You do have me, so you'll never have to find out. Emma wrapped her arms tightly around him. He was her safe space. The next morning, Emma walked into Global with Lisa. She played her part to perfection, never once letting on that she knew about the gala invite. Meanwhile, Nathan was in an extremely good mood. As he sat in his office, he thought about all the back and forth he'd gone through with Emma. They'd finally gotten one over on her. As long as they didn't gloat or slip up and pretend nothing was wrong... She'd never be the wiser. He sat up straight as Emma walked into his office. Are you going to continue working once your collaboration with ISN is done? You had a lot of magazine and endorsement offers. Have you made a decision? Nathan asked as she sat down. I want to work with Top Trends quarterly, Emma said, placing the contract in front of him. Nathan was surprised. He didn't quite understand why she picked TTQ. While they were a high-end magazine... They didn't have the same market share or reputation as the other magazines. Why did she want to work with them? Are you sure? Nathan didn't understand what she was thinking. She'd just taken a huge step towards success and should have been trying to increase her exposure. Instead, she was taking two steps back by choosing a failing magazine and an unusual career path. I'm sure, Emma said, nodding. With Amber receiving an award, I know you'll be using every resource at your disposal to support her. I'm sure you'll have your hands full and won't have any reason to interfere with my job, right? Are you afraid the board members will reject it? Emma, you think too highly of yourself, Nathan said coldly. If you want to do it, then do it. I'll convince the board members, though I hope you're aware of the dangerous decision you're making. I'm aware, and I'm not worried. Emma said, standing up. She had nothing left to say. Emma, are you that desperate to destroy your career? I didn't think you'd make our wishes come true that easily, Nathan said, mockingly, as she headed for his office door. 
Emma paused and turned her head slightly. I think you should be less concerned about me and more concerned about you and Amber. Episode 64, Preparing for Battle Emma, you should be happy with what you have. If you keep trying to further your career, there's no telling what my sister Amber will do to you. I know you don't want to get hurt, Nathan said anxiously, staring at Emma's back. Stop trying to get revenge. Emma kept walking. After all the painful things Nathan had done and said to her, she found his warning ridiculous. She paused briefly, her gaze falling on the bin in his office. Her gala invite was still in it, but she could see it had been torn to pieces. Was that his version of revenge? Nathan, can you honestly say you've been fair to me? I just want to be treated with respect. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Nathan blinked slowly as he tried to follow her gaze. Unfortunately, she'd already turned away. He'd found himself staring at the back of her head instead. Is it possible she already knows about her invitation to the gala, he wondered. Emma left Nathan's office and headed for the main entrance. However, Amber, who was still strutting around Global, stopped her at the front door. Her smile was mocking as she said, Well, if it isn't New York's newest and coming model, you're just so popular these days. Move, Emma said evenly. I received an invitation to the Bright Night Gala. Did you, Miss Huffingcomer? Amber laid her head on Emma's shoulder as she continued. You might have started several trends, but it didn't matter in the end, did it? You're still not welcome in the modeling industry. I'm sure even you can understand how important the gala is to a model's career. She pulled out her invitation, waving it in Emma's face. Not only do you not have an invitation, you don't even have a manager. Who will negotiate your contracts now? Emma remained calm as Amber continued to lean on her and gloat. When she finally stopped talking, Emma leaned in, a slight smile on her face as she whispered, So tell me, is the judge's bed softer than Nathan's? Amber froze, eyes wide. The bright night gala and my non-existent manager should be the least of your worries. You should be more concerned with hiding the smell of deceit clinging to you. It's such a strong smell, don't you think? How long do you think it will take before Nathan figures it out? Amber's career had remained stagnant for so long because of her pride, her constant attempts to destroy the careers of her competitors, and her relationship with Nathan. She'd spent more time trying to catch and keep him than on her own work. If she'd put the same amount of focus into her modeling, she'd already be at the top of her game instead of just a B-grade model. A guilty look crossed Amber's face. Emma laughed as she pushed her aside, walked out of Global, leaving her cursing behind her. Lisa was waiting for her in the car with a mysterious smile. Emma looked at her curiously as she asked with a laugh, <laughs> What's going on? I'm taking you somewhere, Lisa replied vaguely as she started the car. She drove toward downtown New York, parked, and led Emma to one of the most expensive brand name stores in the city. Why did you bring me here? She asked as she looked at the different displays. She was a little afraid she'd be seen by fans. You're buying your battle gear. A familiar deep voice came from the direction of the VIP area. It sounded like Eric had been here for a while. He was wearing a dark blue suit that clung to him like a second skin. He walked toward her with a seductive smile on his face, his steps confident. Eric, Emma breathed his name as he came closer. Global may not want you to attend the Bright Night Gala, but I plan on making you the center of attention, Eric said, hugging her from behind. She had a figure the gods would be jealous of, with perfect curves and long, slender legs. Lisa silently left the store, giving the affectionate couple some time alone. I thought you were busy at work, Emma said, snuggling into his warmth. I will never be too busy for you, he murmured, gently biting her earlobe. By the way, did I tell you that I'm the gala's special guest? Emma was done for a moment before shaking her head. She didn't know why she was surprised. 
Kaleidoscope's won a lot of awards, so of course he'd be there. This will be our first time sharing a stage since we got married. I don't count the Bellamy show, so this is really important to me. I had Lisa bring you to this store because they have a high degree of confidentiality. Also, they just released a series of designs, and there's only one of each. He wanted them to wear matching, one-of-a-kind clothes and jewelry. They may not be able to announce their relationship, but this was his way of showing a subtle yet united front, despite his position in the industry. Emma was the only one he wanted by his side, and he wanted her to know that. She saw the clothes as a symbol of his undying love and support, and it made her feel warm and safe. So, sounds like you already picked some outfits out, Emma said, chest warm with affection. She'd never expected him to be so thoughtful. She had no doubt that he had everything prepared and ready to go. Follow me. Eric grabbed her hand and pulled her toward the dressing room. As she walked behind the partition, he gasped, stunned, as she got her first look at the dress on the mannequin. Go ahead, try it on. Her eyes burned as she entered the dressing room, trying to hold back tears. Her hands trembled as she removed the dress from the mannequin. She'd been a model for several years and had worn thousands of beautiful clothes. But this was the first time a piece of clothing made her feel like crying. The dress was a champagne-colored mermaid gown with transparent shoulders. The cut of the dress accentuated her slender form, and the body had bright, elegant pearls woven in instead of crystals. It made her look soft and graceful, like a goddess. She was speechless, heart pounding, as she stood in front of the huge dressing room mirror. Eric changed into his suit and stepped out behind her. He was wearing a gray retro-style handmade suit with a leopard print tie and a matching handkerchief in his breast pocket. He looked like an English aristocrat. She grabbed his hand as she studied them in the mirror. We look like the perfect couple. What do we do if someone puts two and two together? Episode 65 careful preparations. Hearing her say that they look like a perfect couple, Eric's heart warmed. However, deep down, he understood that Emma still had a long way to go before she was on his level in this industry. Even the top superstars found they couldn't get closer to Eric than simply tinkling wine glasses with him. Everyone in the industry knew that he didn't like anyone who tried to ride on other people's coattails. As for announcing their marriage, he could do that any time, but he'd promised Emma he would give her time to prove herself first. He would wait to announce the marriage until her career had taken off. He gently stroked Emma's hair, conveying a sense of encouragement through his hand. He believed Emma had what it took to climb to the top and was eager to see her succeed. He had no desire for her to just be a pretty face by his side. I forgot to tell you, TTQ Magazine's front cover has been finalized. Emma looked up sweetly and teased. The people from TTQ must have had no idea they were chatting with the infamous Mr. Roberts. I also got to enjoy the rare experience of being an assistant. Even more important, I've invited the editor of TTQ to escort you down the red carpet and protect you. Escort and protect. After hearing this, Emma turned around and wrapped her arms around Eric's neck. Her eyes were warm as she said, You've given me so much. What can I do for you in return? Everything I could give you, you already have. And everything you don't have, you could easily get on your own. Eric gently returned her embrace and answered her simply, All I need is you. Eric buried her head into his shoulder as the tears flowed. He held her close, resting his cheek on her head. The woman in his embrace was so special. He'd never met anyone else who was so touched by small gestures. The next day, Emma met the photographer that Linda sent from Mexico and started working on the front cover of the October issue for Secret. Afterward, all she had left to do with ISN was a stage event. TTQ's front cover would be shot after the Bright Night Gala. 
Regarding the Bright Night Gala, Global was handling it with a low profile. After all, there were so many big shots and superstars attending, they had to remain modest. They didn't want a repeat of last time when Amber had shamelessly compared herself to someone famous. Above all, they didn't want Emma to pick up on any clues. So this time around, they decided not to speak about it openly. If you hadn't broken up with Emma, Mia said to Nathan, her current fame and popularity would make it easy to turn her into an international supermodel. Global would have also gone up in value. But now look what's happening. Mia searched through the comments about Emma online. Fans were reaching out to Global right and left, asking them about Emma's current status. Mia honestly felt it was all a waste. Worst of all, Emma was always seen to get right in the way of Global success. Mia, I have a plan. After the award ceremony, Amber will go overseas to study. When the time comes, I don't know how long Emma will stick around, so I want to train a newcomer. Let's look for someone who resembles Emma, and we can use Emma's fame to debut our newcomer. After all, Emma's already 26 years old. Someone younger will have limitless possibilities. Mia looked at Nathan, suddenly realizing her younger brother still had something to offer. At least this time, he'd managed to suggest something useful. In that case, I'll instruct my staff to find a newcomer, Mia responded. Since Emma is still one of our models, we should make as much use of her as we can. Tomorrow will be the Bright Night Gala, and hopefully nothing will go wrong. If she appears at the event, she'll definitely get even more fans, which won't be good for us. She's so hard to control. Nathan didn't know how to respond, but to be honest, he really didn't know the true Emma. After all, up until recently, Emma had appeared to be like a sheep, allowing others to tell her what to do. And during that time, everything she'd done had revolved around him. But he'd noticed that ever since the relationship between him and Amber had gone public, Emma was no longer the same. Mia, I'm still not sure. I need to ask Lisa about Emma's schedule tomorrow night and make sure she won't show up at the Bright Night Gala. Nathan couldn't stop thinking about what Emma had said the previous day, words that seemed to have a hidden meaning. He wasn't certain Emma knew they'd torn up her invitation. Call her then, Mia commanded. Nathan pulled out his phone and dialed Lisa's number, one he hadn't dialed for a long time. What's Emma have planned for tomorrow night? She'll be shooting the October front cover for Secret, Lisa responded. It's a night scene, so the shoot will take place at 8 p.m., why are you asking? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I just want you to take good care of her in case she's upset about not being invited to the Bright Night Gala. Hearing these words, Lisa was disgusted. It was obvious he wanted to know where Emma would be the next night. He was so fake. Did he really think she couldn't tell he was just pretending to care? What did Nathan want? Emma was putting on her makeup in the dressing room, a secret shoot had already begun. Linda was aware of Emma's situation and had instructed her team to make sure to help her. He's asking what you're doing tomorrow night. Lisa put her phone away and smiled. Emma, from what I see, the jerks are being extremely cautious around you. It's funny. They have no idea that not only will you be attending tomorrow night, you'll also be attending with TTQ's editor. Everyone knew that although TTQ wasn't a best-selling magazine, it was still high-end. The founder came from a very wealthy background and didn't need the magazine to make money. He was in the entertainment industry simply because he enjoyed it. Emma, tomorrow night, you're going to grab everyone's attention. Emma didn't tell Lisa that Eric was going to be the special guest at the Bright Night Gala. She wanted to surprise her. Tomorrow night would be an opportunity to destroy Nathan and his dreams and the perfect chance to tap into resources in the fashion industry. Meanwhile, Amber was also carefully making preparations. She knew the gala would determine whether or not she could make a comeback. She'd already decided that if she managed to secure extra connections and resources after the award ceremony, she would terminate her pregnancy. Otherwise, her life would have to be on hold for the next eight months, at the very least. How could having a baby benefit her? Love? Compared to fame and fortune, love was nothing.
Episode 66, Keeping Emma Busy. What will Emma be doing tomorrow night? Amber asked Gary after she tried on her dress. I think she'll be shooting the cover for Secrets October issue, he replied, adjusting his glasses as he spoke. He was certain he knew Emma's every move. I refuse to believe she won't react at all, she said skeptically. Just thinking about the humiliation Emma had put her through made Amber want to tear her into a million pieces. Find out the location of her shoot, she continued. And just to be safe, arrange for someone to keep her busy that day. Only then will I be able to relax a little. Don't worry, I know what to do, he said. His words seemed to hold a deeper meaning. When it came to bullying Emma, he was quite experienced. Back when Emma had been Amber's substitute, he'd secretly caused a lot of trouble for her. While you're at it, I need you to contact the hospital discreetly, Amber said. After the award ceremony is over, I'm going to get rid of this child. Gary sighed. He knew that chasing fame was her main goal in life, but he still felt like she was taking things too far by wanting to give up her own child. He also worried what Nathan would do if he found out about her plan. Although Gary would never say it, he knew that if Amber betrayed Nathan like this, there was no way she'd be able to follow in Emma's footsteps. Emma was miles ahead of Amber in every way, from professionalism to people skills. And she put in a lot of effort to get where she was in her career. Amber, on the other hand, was always trying to take shortcuts. The next morning, Mia and Nathan were in Nathan's office with three young models standing before them. The previous day, they had discussed finding a new model, and Mia, being the woman of action that she was, had already considered the possible candidates and brought the three best in to meet with them. They were all roughly 16 years old, tall with long legs, and vibrantly beautiful. Mia looked at the three girls as she sat next to Nathan. She lifted her eyebrows at him and asked, What do you think? I happened to come across a model search competition and found these girls. The one in the middle is Ariel. She looks a lot like Emma, don't you think? Nathan looked at the girls and took notice of the tallest one in the middle. From the outside, she did look a lot like Emma, especially in her nose, which was tall and straight. But he could tell her temperament was much different. Mia continued, I know she's still a long way off compared to Emma, but she's young, while Emma's already 26 years old. How much success do you think Emma can achieve at her age? Look at her right now. How much energy has she wasted just to get this far? Nathan wasn't quite convinced yet. Have you already done a background check, he asked. Of course, she replied. Ari's family isn't very rich, but her parents are well-educated. They aren't too bad. She placed Ariel's information in front of him, adding, I'm confident we can make her appear on the biggest runways in the world. As the siblings continued talking in the office, Emma stood outside the door listening to their conversation. She had dropped by the office to pick up some gifts that her fans had sent her. But when she was showing up, she saw that the gifts had been ripped open and strewn about by the office staff. A moment later, the door to Nathan's office opened, and three beautiful young girls walked out. They all sized Emma up as they walked past, especially the tallest one. Emma seethed as she stepped into the office. There's truly no limit to how sinister these two can be, she thought. Oh, it's you, Mia said, a look of disgust on her face. Emma threw one of her torn-up boxes onto the desk in front of Mia. After paying your penalty, you were so poor that you had to steal my gift? She fumed. What's your attitude? Mia yelled. You may have a bit of fame now, but you're still the company's artist, and I'm the artist's director. Besides, you haven't even been invited to the Bright Night Gala, so clearly the rest of the industry hasn't noticed you. So what gives you the right to talk to your superiors like this? Her eyes were filled with ridicule and disdain as she looked at Emma. Did I really not get invited? Emma asked. Nathan's heart skipped a beat. He was becoming more and more certain that Emma knew what was going on, but was too good at controlling her emotions to let it show. Almost no one could tell what she was thinking. Of course not, Mia replied confidently. What, you can't accept the truth? Were you hoping to go? 
Too bad you won't have a chance. Nathan gripped his pen tightly in his hand and said, Emma, just focus on your magazine shoot for tonight. Stop thinking about the Bright Night Gala. You don't want to distract yourself. You definitely didn't get invited, so don't waste any more time worrying about it. Emma laughed gently. She wasn't fazed by Mia at all. In fact, she was quite amused at the thought of what was about to happen to Mia. I'll play my part as a model, she said. But next time someone opens my mail, they should expect a call from my lawyer. Mia smirked. I never thought the daughter of a perfume empire would get so upset over a few little gifts. The gifts aren't the main issue, Emma shot back. The main issue is that I don't want you taking anything I've earned just because you're my manager. With that, she turned to leave, but Nathan stopped her. Have you already finalized the contract with TTQ? he asked. Of course, she responded. I've heard that TTQ is difficult to deal with, he said. How'd you manage to do it? You don't need to worry about that, she said calmly. She felt a sense of pride as she spoke. After all, Eric had already done more for her than Nathan could achieve in a lifetime. Nathan nodded for her to leave. He was done questioning her for now. But as he watched her walk out the door and down the hall, he still couldn't figure out what she was thinking. He turned to his sister. Mia, I suspect Emma already knows the truth about the Bright Night Gala. Mia thought for a moment. Then she said, It doesn't matter if she knows or not, Nathan. I won't allow her to just appear at the event. I don't care if you make her shoot for a magazine or anything else you can think of. Just keep her busy. We need to watch her carefully. We can't allow anything to go wrong. Otherwise, we'll just have to watch as her threat to us grows stronger and stronger. Understood, Nathan said sincerely. I won't repeat the same mistake. He knew they couldn't give Emma the opportunity to scheme against Global Pictures again. Episode 67 The Bright Night Gala The evening of the star-studded Bright Night Gala had finally arrived. Outside the venue, a magnificently long red carpet and a signature wall awaited the appearance of the guests. The scene was surrounded by excited reporters and fans who were all holding up phones, cameras, or LED signs. The names glowing on the signs flashed like stars in the vast night sky. In front of the signature wall stood two smartly dressed event hosts, each holding a microphone recording their opening speeches. It had been a long time since an event of this caliber had been held in New York City and its arrival signified the start of the entertainment industry's award season. At 8 o'clock, the invited guests started arriving. As the crowd around them screamed, Nathan held Amber's hand and walked her down the red carpet, with Mia close behind them. Between Mia's scandal in Mexico and Nathan's affair with Amber, Global Pictures had been a popular topic of discussion lately. But Emma was nowhere to be found. Emma Miller who had appeared on the cover of Secret Magazine, who'd just become ISN's newest spokesperson, who was so much more popular than Amber, was missing from the red carpet. The hosts gave each other confused looks. They were sure Emma's name was on the guest list. One of them announced, Walking up the red carpet right now, we have the CEO of Global Pictures Entertainment, Nathan Davis, the famous model, Amber Lee, and the skilled talent manager, Mia Davis. Please step onto the stage so we can give you a short interview. After one of the hosts ushered them onto the stage, the other began the interview with a question that was on everyone's mind. May we ask why Miss Miller isn't here today? Or have she and Mr. Davis decided to arrive separately? The other host chimed in. Nathan furrowed his eyebrows and opened his mouth to speak, but Mia stepped in front of him and replied, we notified Emma of the event, but it's been difficult for us to reach her lately. We didn't hear back from her. We've just been told she's decided not to appear tonight. We at Global Pictures hope that next time, no matter her decision, she'll notify us earlier. Listening to Mia's reply, the host could tell Emma and Global were at odds. The tone Mia used seemed to be accusing Emma of being too arrogant and selfish to attend the gala. One of the hosts attempted to smooth things out. That's all right, he said. 
Maybe Emma's just under the weather tonight. We look forward to seeing her at the next event. But it was obvious to the hosts and to the crowd what Global's true motive was in denouncing Emma. Judging by the previous incidents, if the two hosts had to choose who to trust between Emma and the staff of Global Pictures, they wouldn't hesitate to choose Emma. Nathan's betrayal, Amber's tricks, and Global's multiple attempts at suppression had not crushed her. It hadn't been easy for Emma, but she'd stayed strong and earned her place in the modeling world. Most impressive of all, she had an easygoing personality and kept a low profile despite her popularity. Signs bearing Emma's name were scattered throughout the audience, as were her many fans. When they heard Mia explain Emma's absence, they were tempted to run up on stage and tear her tongue from her mouth. They were sure she was lying. The Emma they knew would never do something like that. Emma had been treated so harshly by her agency, yet she'd always told her fans to wait patiently for her, and she'd always been grateful for everything she had. There was no way she would reject an invitation to the Bright Night Gala. Global is defaming Emma, her fans thought. Mia must die. A fan who couldn't restrain himself screamed out, You're lying! Global is lying! But it was so noisy that his voice was lost in the crowd. Mia knew the host was trying to save the situation, but she insisted on causing trouble. After all, her main reason for coming to the event was to tear Emma down. She continued, All I can say is that we can't do anything about her. The host smiled awkwardly and began beckoning the three of them toward the signature wall. But at that moment, his attention was drawn to a black limousine pulling up at the head of the red carpet. The person getting out of the car was the editor of TTQ magazine, George Benedict. And it looked like he wasn't alone. This was the first time he'd ever brought someone to an event so everyone was watching him carefully as he held out his hand to help a beautiful woman out of the limo. Onlookers gasped when they realized the beautiful woman was Emma Miller. Emma, who had supposedly said she couldn't be making an appearance, smiled warmly as she hooked arms with George and walked down the red carpet with him. Her fans started cheering as soon as they saw her. She's here, they shouted. Emma's arrived! Hearing the cheers, Nathan turned to see what all the commotion was about. When he saw who was walking down the red carpet toward him, he immediately turned to Mia and saw the color drain from her face. Didn't we agree to keep watch over her, he thought? How is she here? See, Emma, the two hosts lit up in excitement as they realized that Mia's plan had been unsuccessful. They quickly invited Emma and George to the signature wall and stood them next to the trio from Global. Miss Miller, you are so beautiful today, one of the hosts said. Thank you, Emma replied, clasping her hands together in gratitude. She gave a joyful smile to the crowd as well, giving everyone there all the more reason to like her. We were just speaking with Mr. Davis, the host continued. We were asking him why you weren't attending such a big event. But it turns out you're here with Mr. Benedict. I was wondering how the Bright Night Gala could go on without you. George stepped forward. But Emma is only attending as my guest, he said to the host. She never received an invitation of her own. These words would have sounded ungracious coming from Emma. But George was well known for being straightforward. After he spoke, the hosts exchanged stunned looks. Then, one of them said, Mr. Benedict, there must have been a misunderstanding. Miss Miller is definitely on our guest list. The invitation was sent to her agency. As soon as the word agency left his mouth, the host realized where things must have gone wrong. Global pictures, he thought. Global must have hidden her invitation from her. As a talent agency, how could it treat its own artists so terribly? The fans in the crowd all glared at Mia, Nathan, and Amber. You're shameless, one of them cried. Just a moment ago, Mia had been trying to push the blame onto Emma, but now the truth had been revealed. George continued, Emma is a model I have high hopes for. 
After watching Global's treatment of her, I'd like to officially announce that I'll be using all my resources to pave a new path for Emma. I might even open up a studio for her. The words hit Mia like a slap in the face, but Emma just smiled the entire time. She was wondering whether Nathan was trying to ruin his own reputation on purpose, or if he was just good at it. More importantly, she knew this incident would allow everyone to see Global's true aim. Since they couldn't keep Emma, they were doing all they could to defame her. Unfortunately for them, not only did things not go to plan, they completely backfired. The host quickly ushered all five of them into the venue. Distinguished guests, please head in, he said. Not only is the atmosphere exceptionally lively tonight, but we're also expecting a special guest. He smiled tensely at the crowd. Though they'd all just seen what Global had done, the company had still been officially invited to the event, so he had to let them in. Episode 68, An Unexpected Discovery How did you mess this up? Mia shot at Nathan as they entered the venue. She had just received a huge blow on the red carpet, and all she could do now was walk inside with her tail between her legs. What she really wanted to do was find a hole to hide in. Nathan looked at Emma, who was walking ahead of them. She must have known we tore up her invitation, he said. She was putting on an act when we talked to her, watching her every move so she could stay one step ahead. If she's that smart, Mia retorted. She continued to blame everything on Nathan's bad management. Just wait and see. Since we couldn't stop her today, it's going to be even harder to stop her in the future. Amber glanced at the siblings arguing next to her, her eyes flashing with ridicule. Didn't Mia claim to be a great manager, she thought? Emma's not that smart. Everyone just underestimated her and let their guard down, including me. But it didn't matter how hard Emma tried to climb to success. Since Amber had already managed to secure a top 10 model award, she was confident she would be able to defeat Emma. The trio had caused such a commotion outside the venue that word of them trying to exclude Emma quickly spread to everyone present. Nathan looked at the scornful gazes of the guests and tried hard to hold back his anger. They soon found their assigned seat. They were seated toward the back, according to their status in the industry. As they sat down, they felt a bit relieved to be hidden from the other guests' sight for a while. What they didn't expect was that Emma would be seated two rows from the front. On Emma's left sat George, and on her right sat one of the judges of the Top Ten Model Awards. This judge just so happened to be the man Amber had slept with. Amber's eyes widened. How Emma so lucky, she thought. Though Emma hadn't met the man as far as she knew, Amber still felt uneasy, filled with guilt over what she'd done. Amber, what's wrong? Nathan asked. Your palms are sweaty. Nothing's wrong, she said, brushing him off with a smile. I'm just a bit nervous. The Bright Night Gala was like the opening ceremony for the annual award season, so there were quite a few celebrities in attendance. Prominent figures from both the entertainment industry and the fashion industry had shown up to the event. Emma concentrated on the stage as the hosts gave their opening speeches. However, the judge sitting to her right was mesmerized by her legs. Mark Wicker was well known for being sleazy. That's how Amber had managed to get her way with him. Not content with just looking at Emma's leg, he turned to her and said, Miss Miller, you're so beautiful. I read a recent article about you and learned that you're extremely professional, too. I have high hopes for you. He gave her a suggestive grin. She could sense he was hinting at something else as he spoke. She smiled politely and said, Thank you for the kind words. Seeing the judge inching closer and closer to Emma, Mr. Benedict tapped her on the shoulder and said, Take my seat, Emma. I have something I want to ask, Mr. Whitaker. She could tell that George was trying to help her out of this sticky situation. She gave him a grateful smile before swapping seats with him. George knew Emma was a very professional model with a promising future, 
so he didn't want any negative news about her to arise from the event. Seeing that Emma was unwilling to play along, Mark glared at her. He knew she and Amber worked for the same company. Why is Amber so easy to get in bed, but Emma so stuck up, he thought. Isn't she just a fallen, out-of-date model who's only recently gotten back on her feet? Emma kept her eyes on the stage and pretended to be unaware of what was happening. But deep down, she knew that she may have just offended a prominent modeling judge. Amber watched them from the back, focusing on their movements. She noticed the old sleaze bag had his eyes set on Emma. If Emma decides to follow the same path I did, she thought, then she'd get to step on me all over again. After all, who wouldn't choose a shortcut to success? Her eyes narrowed. Why does Emma have to fight with me over everything? On this stage, the hosts were throwing out punchlines, one after the other, making the audience roar with laughter. After the head of the organizing committee gave his speech, it was announced that the ceremony had officially begun, and the special guest was about to appear. Eric. Eric. Emma was chanting her husband's name in her heart. He was an untouchable superstar who everyone looked up to. In fact, he had a more dignified presence than even the most famous celebrities. He was more attractive than anyone else in attendance. And tonight, he would appear at the same event as his wife for the first time, even though no one knew they were married. In a moment, the person who will be making an appearance, the host had only just started speaking, but below the stage, the crowd was already cheering loudly. The host smiled, waiting for everyone to calm down, and then continued, He's more popular than any superstar or celebrity. He's the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment. Mr. Eric Roberts! As soon as the host stepped aside, Eric confidently walked onto the stage. Under the spotlight, his sculpted body looked even more well-built than usual. More importantly, the aura he exuded was like that of a king. It was like he was born to stand formidably before his subjects, where no one could reach him. Eric swept his gaze across the room before spotting Emma. As their eyes met, their feelings for each other showed in their eyes, but only lasted a moment before Eric quickly looked away. Mr. Roberts, please speak, the host said, offering him the microphone. Eric's eyes twinkled as he took center stage. The mole on his right earlobe shone like an obsidian earring. He raised the microphone and said, Kaleidoscope's door has always been open to winners. With this one sentence, this one simple statement, he conveyed a message to everyone in attendance. Kaleidoscope only accepted the most successful artists. At the same time, he'd given his company's artists an affirmation. They were at the top of their game. And behind them was Kaleidoscope Entertainment, an undefeated legend in the industry. Hearing his words, Emma knew he was encouraging her as well. Only when she became stronger would she be able to go wherever she wanted in her career. Mr. Roberts, the host interjected, I can't help but notice that your suit is a perfect match to Miss Miller's dress. Emma's beautiful dress had been imprinted on the host's memory, and since she was seated so close to the stage, a quick glance over to her made the resemblance so obvious that he had to point it out. Emma hadn't expected her name to be called out. After being stunned for a few seconds, she stood up and smiled. It's an honor, she said. Everyone in the crowd knew Eric hated artists who rode on others' coattails, so they were all wondering whether Emma had deliberately matched her outfit to his to cause a stir and what he would say about it. Those below the stage waited for Eric to react and for Emma to be humiliated. Episode 69, In the Same Frame. Hushed whispers echoed from below the stage as everyone in the audience looked at Emma. Is that the model who got famous for being in Secret Magazine? Yeah, it's her. Just because she's slightly attractive, she thinks she can start scheming. Didn't anyone tell her that Mr. Roberts hates people who ride on other people's coattails? Especially people who try and ride on his coattails. 
She's just asking for it. Let's just sit back and watch this show. She's a nobody, but she sure is brave. Everyone present was waiting to see how Emma would be humiliated and how pitiful she would end up looking. Nathan, Mia, and Amber were quietly cheering to themselves. If Emma were to offend the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment, it would cause her to be blacklisted by the entire industry. This would be far more damaging to her than anything global could pull off. Nathan was pleasantly surprised. Meanwhile, standing on the stage, Eric knew exactly what was going through everyone's minds. He knew they wanted to see Emma get humiliated. But unfortunately for them, this woman was his wife. He could never let his wife become a punchline. So he simply smiled and declared, I hope this kind of coincidence happens more often. After all, Miss Miller is very beautiful. Hearing his reaction, the audience was shocked. The guests looked at each other in disbelief, wondering why he hadn't said anything mean to her. His words had been gentle, kind, and polite. They didn't contain a trace of ridicule. In fact, he had genuinely praised her. It didn't take long for everyone to realize what Eric meant. If Emma had indeed contacted his assistant or others around him to ask about his outfit, Eric would not have let her off easily. So it was obvious that their matching outfits were truly a coincidence. A beautiful coincidence. Meanwhile, Emma did not appear to be playing up the moment, nor was she becoming defensive about it. This gained her even more favor with the crowd and made everyone feel at ease with her. Without trying to explain herself, she simply smiled and elegantly sat back down, leaving a lasting impression on the guests. Everyone thought the incident was over, but suddenly Eric spoke again. I remember Miss Miller's performance at the Bellamy show at the Brooklyn City Center. I hope you continue to work hard. His words completely stunned the audience. The video from the time he had stood up for her at the show was still being circulated online, so he couldn't deny that he knew her. But the fact that he told her to work hard suggested that Kaleidoscope hadn't given her any offers, as the company only worked with the most powerful artist. However, it didn't mean she wouldn't receive any offers in the future. A model like her, who conducted herself so professionally, had a promising future. No one could predict how far she would go. All the fashion personalities in the crowd stared at Emma with fascination. Meanwhile, Emma looked at Eric helplessly. He had agreed not to interfere in her private matters. Yet here he was doing all he could to increase her fame. Eric returned her gaze. This event was a rare opportunity for the two of them to appear together and he didn't know when the next one would be. What's wrong with saying a few kind words to my wife, he thought. After all, he hadn't gone out of his way to help her. He'd merely spoken the truth. The hosts adored Emma and her kind, friendly attitude. Plus, after witnessing how Global had treated her earlier, they felt she could use some cheering up. The female host gathered her courage and said, Mr. Roberts, since this amazing coincidence has come to our attention, why don't we sign off with a happy ending? You should take a photo together. A photo together? The members of the crowd were in an uproar. It's Kaleidoscope's almighty king she's speaking to, they thought. Even someone who just won an Oscar wouldn't dare for such a thing. Does this host want to get fired? The male host since the atmosphere had grown awkward, so he prepared to step in and save the situation. But at that moment, the crowd grew quiet as Eric responded. I don't think I can refuse such a happy ending, he said, smiling. Great, the female host replied. In that case, could we please get Miss Miller onto the stage? The host smiled as her voice echoed through the microphone to all corners of the room. Emma looked around at the envious gazes. She quickly gathered up her courage. She knew that whether she agreed to the photo or not, 
people would still gossip about her. In that case, there was no reason she should give up on the chance to take a photo with Eric. So she calmly stood up and walked toward the stage, not allowing anyone to see what she was thinking. A moment later, she was standing, elegant and poised, at Eric's side. Looking at them, the crowd could see that one of them was handsome and respectable, and the other gentle and elegant. They were indeed a good match for each other. However, no one suspected they were in a relationship, as they both acted modestly, nodding politely at each other. Besides, everyone present was more focused on how lucky Emma was to be up there with him. The crowd began to murmur, oh, She's just a small-time artist, yet she gets called on stage to take a photo with Eric. She sure is lucky. Just wait and see. This small-time artist will definitely use this photo to gain publicity tomorrow. Emma, don't be shy. Move in a little closer, the host said. Eric stretched out his arm, placing his hand on Emma's shoulder, and pulled her toward him. The two of them were so close together, they were touching. Everyone's eyes were about to pop out from the shock of it all, including Emma's. Eric looked down at her and smiled. We can't get any closer, or else my wife will have it out with me when I get home. A surprised expression swept across the faces in the crowd. Eric has a wife? someone whispered. He was truly the most low-profile and mysterious figure in the entertainment industry. He sure knew how to keep things under wraps. Emma maintained her smile as she thought about what she'd say to him when they got home. Although he'd remained in control of the situation and navigated it well, the fluctuation of emotions it cost her was difficult to handle. The two of them smiled for photos and then quickly separated. Emma politely shook Eric's hand before a staff member escorted her back to her seat. After watching what happened on stage, the judge who had flirted with Emma no longer dared to try anything with her. He now understood that this model was not one he could mess with. Although she didn't appear to be competitive, she knew exactly what she wanted and what she had to do to get it. On the other hand, only someone like Amber, who took shortcuts, would let him play around with her and do as he pleased. The photo opportunity was followed by a brief interlude as Eric thanked the host and made his way to his seat in the audience. So, Eric is married, Mia thought. She turned to Nathan and sneered. Eric hates it when people use his name to hype themselves up. The Emma I know has no idea how to get publicity. I guess tomorrow we'll have to help her. Episode 70, The Setup The Bright Night Gala had become a night of success for Emma. Once again, Emma had destroyed Global's plans to keep her down. On top of that, at the ceremony, a newcomer like her, who shouldn't have received much notice, ended up leaving a lasting impression on everyone, thanks to Eric's kind words to her and her own calm demeanor. Among the people who had taken notice of her were leading professionals in the fashion industry, including the CEO of Star Age, who had given her an offer previously only to be turned down. Emma Miller was a model Star Age had tried to poach multiple times, she had been blacklisted by Star King three years ago and had just announced she was making a comeback. She had been stifled many times throughout her career, yet she had still managed to get where she was with poise, and she had even been fortunate enough to get to take a photo with the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment. With all this in mind, the CEO of Star Age approached Nathan after the ceremony and said, I've been trying to poach Emma for three years now, but she's never accepted my offers. But now that I see how Global has been treating her, I feel like I need to try again. Nathan looked at the tall, well-built, and powerful man before him. He was about to reply that Emma's contract was his company's concern and no one else's. But then he started thinking about all the years Emma had been with Global, and she had not only been loyal to him, 
but it also missed many opportunities because of him. Nathan's mouth twitched a little, but no words came out. The man continued, When I make my move, just don't do anything you'll regret. Nathan remained silent. He knew the man before him was a far more capable CEO than he was. But his mind was a mess because he never before considered that Emma might leave Global. It turned out that all along, he'd been too focused on himself. On one side, he was cheating with Amber, and on the other, he was hanging on to Emma. He'd never realized that Emma was a gem and that her tolerance, her honesty, all that she'd given to him would someday be gone. Nathan, don't tell me you're feeling merciful all of a sudden, Mia exclaimed, noticing her brother was being unusually silent. No way, he replied stubbornly, wrapping his arm around Amber. However, the fear he held deep in his heart was slowly seeping out. It was a bright night indeed. Lights were flashing all through the venue, and wine glasses were clinking as the guests began to mingle. At that moment, the distance between Emma and Nathan was no longer as simple as a few rows of seats. As Emma and George mingled with the other guests, George was speaking highly of Emma to all the fashion executives they met and recommending they work with her. After one such conversation, he turned to her and asked, Is your manager here tonight? I'd love to meet him. We got along really well during our conversations. Emma was dumbfounded for a moment as she glanced around the hall for Eric. She spotted him clinking wine glasses with a group of celebrities. Their eyes met and he looked at her caringly. He seemed to be asking her, what's wrong? The couple understood each other's thoughts, even from across the room. Emma shook her head slightly, as if to say, nothing, I just wanted to know where you were. Eric's lips curved into an attractive smile before he turned back and continued his conversation with the man beside him. Emma turned her attention back to George and replied, He's overseas right now. I'll have to introduce you to him next time. Okay, I look forward to it, he said. He's not overseas. He's right here, Emma thought. But she knew that if she told anyone the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment was her manager, they would never believe her. Mia and the others sat in a corner, watching Emma chat with the other guests. They had tried to mingle themselves, but no matter who they spoke to, as soon as they said they were from Global Pictures, people would give them that look that said, So, it's you, the fools who tried to suppress your own artist. Seeing all the attention Emma had received at the event, they were all filled with regret at their failed plan. So, the Davis siblings had become too ashamed to walk around anymore and sat down at a table in the corner. But this meant that Amber was missing out on the opportunity to make friends. She freed herself from under Nathan's arm and looked at him. I need to go to the bathroom, she said. She and Mark had been sending messages to each other with their eyes for a while. Go ahead, Nathan said. He didn't question the woman who slept by his side at all. Amber stood up and walked across the room. As she passed Mark, she deliberately brushed the back of her hand against his. Then, the two of them entered the women's bathroom, one after another. A few moments later, some heavy breathing could be heard coming from behind the bathroom door. During their moment of passion, Amber set her price. After the award season is over, I want to leave Global and join Creative Century, she said. She knew men were most vulnerable at times like this. Sure, Mark replied from behind her. But are you sure you won't miss your little boyfriend? He's always been just a stepping stone for me, she said. He laughed. You sure are ruthless. The two of them spent half an hour in the bathroom before tidying themselves up and walking out. Nathan and Mia had found a few guests to talk to, so they didn't notice Amber's absence. Seeing this, Amber decided not to rush back to them and just sat to the side by herself, observing everything that was happening in the venue. After the gala is over, 
Emma's fame will keep rising, Amber thought. But in the end, she still doesn't have any big awards. If Star Age is determined to get her, I'll be signing on with Creative Century. So I'll be at a bigger agency than hers with more resources for me to use. And when the time comes, I'll make sure Emma experienced the pain of being stepped on and humiliated. Seeing Amber sitting by herself, Mia got up, wine glass in hand, and walked over to her. You don't seem to be the low-profile type, she said, sounding a little surprised. What's on your mind? Emma's already got all the attention. Do you think I can compete with her now? Amber laughed coldly. I've already contacted the paparazzi and organized a free headline for her, Mia replied. I'm curious how Eric will react once he sees the article. She gently swirled the wine glass in her hand and fixed her gaze on Emma. Mia had failed to realize that the reason Eric managed to keep such a low profile was because he had connections with people who worked in the entertainment news industry. So, not long after Mia made her phone call, Luke received a recording of it from one of the news agency's staff members. The staff member asked Luke what to do about it. Since it involved Emma, he didn't dare make the decision on his own, so he quickly walked over to Eric and whispered in his ear. Eric was quiet for a few seconds. Then he apologized to the guests around him and headed into an empty waiting room with Luke. Luke took out his phone and played him the recording. Hello, I'm Emma Miller. At the Bright Night Gala, I took an intimate photo with the CEO of Kaleidoscope Entertainment. I want you to hype it up for me with an ambitious headline. I want to be the main story on the front cover, no matter how much it costs. Episode 71, One More Scheme The culprit must be smart, Luke explained. They used a voice changer. From the recording alone, it's hard to tell who it could be. He had seen situations like this many times before. After all, the entertainment industry had a way of bringing out the worst in people. Looks like someone who's experienced, he concluded. Contact the media source and tell them to get the culprit on the phone, Eric said. Tell them to ask the culprit to repeat their request. While it's happening, you look around here and see which of the global staff is on the phone. Follow them quietly and secure evidence of the call. Be sure not to let the culprit figure out what we're doing. Luke could see the intensity in Eric's eyes. Yes, sir, he replied with a nod and turned to leave. Eric returned to the event room. His sharp gaze swept over to the Davis siblings. Deep down, he already knew which one of them had called the media. The only person capable of doing such a thing was Mia, the highly experienced backstabber. If Nathan were good at scheming like his sister was, he would have made it a lot further in his career by now. Emma noticed the change in Eric's expression and looked at him curiously from across the room. Eric contained his anger, picked up his phone, and sent her a short message. Let's talk at home. He had underestimated her sensitivity to his emotions. After living with him for so long, she had come to understand his temper. She knew he only got upset when someone was trying to do her harm. To him, nothing else was worth getting angry over. She glanced over at the Davis siblings. She already had a vague idea of what was going on. Tonight, she'd been too outstanding and impressive for Nathan and Mia to ignore. Although she knew they'd try and stab her in the back for it, she hadn't expected them to have this little restraint. Ten minutes later, Eric watched as Mia stood up from her seat. Phone in hand, she slipped into an empty hallway, hidden from the other guests' view. After a few moments, she quietly returned to her seat. Then Luke appeared from the same hallway, gesturing to Eric that he had secured the evidence. Everything is going as planned, Eric thought. He wanted to launch an attack on Mia for a long time, but he hadn't been able to since all her actions so far had just been part of her job at Global. 
But now she's decided she's brave enough to offend me personally, he thought. When the gala was over, Emma walked out of the venue with George. Mia and the others followed close behind so that Emma could feel their piercing glares on her back. George had an issue to deal with at work, so as soon as they got outside, he found his driver and left by himself. Mia took the opportunity to approach Emma. She looked at her coldly and said, I really underestimated you, Emma. You managed to make an appearance even though we tried to hold you back. But it doesn't matter how smart you are. You've still done something you shouldn't have. How dare you take a photo with the CEO of Kaleidoscope? Did you think you could use him to promote yourself? I'm warning you, you'll only make enemies doing things like that. Emma sighed. She didn't take anything Mia said to heart. If that's all, I need to go home and rest, she replied, turning to leave. So, do you think you're Eric's girlfriend now? Mia raged. Only playing around with you. How could you think so highly of yourself? Emma turned around and glared sharply at her. Mia, I admire your ability to be so jealous all the time. Thanks to you, Global's demise will come even sooner. Mia looked at her with ridicule. The thought of the news article she'd organized filled her heart with joy. Emma could tell what Mia was thinking. This was not the first time she'd seen that provoking smile on her. Mia's planning an attack on me and can hardly wait for me to see it, she thought. But these things never go her way, and this time will be no different. Nathan butted in, looking at Emma seriously. While we're talking, when will you be leaving Global? Star H has tried to poach you multiple times. Why aren't you leaving? Haven't you gotten enough revenge on me? I just want to see if you still have an ounce of humanity left in you, Emma replied. At that moment, Lisa pulled up in a sports car, and Emma got in and left without looking back. Mia turned her scrutinizing glare to Amber. Why were you so quiet tonight, she asked. I wasn't feeling well, Amber replied. Her face was pale. I'm cheating on my fiancé while pregnant with his child, she thought one more little lie to me. Then hurry home and get some sleep, Mia said. The award ceremony is coming up soon. Don't let anything go wrong between now and then. Don't even think of going to the hospital. Just stay home and rest. Yes, Mia, Amber said. I'll be sure to get some rest, she thought. I wouldn't want to miss tomorrow's top news story. Reporters and fans were still swarming the venue after the gala, so Emma and Eric couldn't risk driving home together. The two of them took separate cars home to avoid attracting attention. Emma got home first and began making some soup for Eric to help him sober up. She knew he'd had quite a few drinks at the gala. As soon as he walked in the door, she handed him his pajamas and told him to get comfortable on the couch. What happened today? She asked as she set a bowl of soup in front of him. Why did you look so upset at the gala? She sat down next to him and gently rubbed his stomach, trying to make him feel better. What do you think? He replied, pulling her close and handing her his phone. He showed her the recording he'd received and the video Luke had sent. Emma was confused at first, but then her expression softened and she let out a laugh. Looks like Mia has her methods, she said. Too bad she got caught, he said, gently stroking her hair. You don't need to worry about this. Since it involves me, I'll deal with it, and I won't show her any mercy. Emma understood what he meant. She knew he'd been waiting for his opportunity for a long time. Since Mia had made the first move, her destiny was now in Eric's hands. You already have your evidence. Why are you still upset? Emma asked. I've been schemed against so many times. Did you think one more was going to affect me? He took a deep breath and embraced her in his arms. My heart breaks whenever someone tries to hurt you. That's why I'm upset. Luckily, I can protect you this time. She wrapped her arms around his waist and took in his scent for a moment. 
Then she pulled out her phone and showed him the photo of them from the gala. Does this look like a wedding photo? She asked, smiling. Of course, he replied as his gaze softened. My wife looks beautiful. He knew Emma didn't want him to worry about her and was trying to cheer him up, even in the face of her manager's latest scheme. Mia may be brave enough to cause trouble this time, he thought, but tomorrow I'll make her pay for it a thousand times over. Episode 72, Mia's Surprise After the gala, Mia waited patiently for Emma to be taken down by Kaleidoscope Entertainment. She knew a powerful company like that would be able to do a lot of damage to Emma's reputation. However, she had completely forgotten about the man in charge who stood in the pinnacle of the entertainment industry. A man with so much power, he wouldn't allow himself to be a pawn in her little game. After all, Eric had agreed to take the photo, even though he knew it would cause a stir and that Mia would try to take advantage of it. He'd been prepared for whatever would happen next. But Mia hadn't realized this and went ahead with framing Emma. But this time, instead of staying within the confines of Global, she made the mistake of bringing Eric's company into it. Mia was happy for the rest of the night. However, the headlines she saw the next morning were not what she expected. Exposed, Global's director schemes against her own client. Mia Davis goes too far trying to frame Emma Miller. Global civil war continues. Did Emma Miller get close to Kaleidoscope CEO for publicity? At first, Mia thought all the media outlets had fallen under a spell of some sort. But as she read the articles, she realized that her plan had backfired completely. The news had originated from the famous weekly publication that Mia called the Night of the Gala. The outlet published a transcript of Mia's conversation with the reporter and explained how Mia had pretended to be Emma in an attempt to frame her. The publication also included video evidence of the phone call. Although the person in the video could only be seen from one side, no one could deny that it was Mia Davis. In the three-minute video clip, she could be heard discussing headlines and prices with the reporter all while pretending to be Emma. After seeing the video, Mia knew she wouldn't be able to smooth things out. The news had already spread everywhere. It was on almost every entertainment website and was trending on social media. News involving the mysterious, low-profile CEO of Kaleidoscope didn't come around often. So all the media outlets were eager to report on the story. By the time Mia got to the office that morning, her terrible deed had been seen by everyone on the internet. The online comments were endless. Who knew the entertainment industry was so dark? Luckily, bad things come to bad people. Full support for Emma. She's always kept a low profile. If Mia can treat her like this, she must have no conscience. If Mia likes acting so much, why didn't she become an actress? She's really the cheapest manager of them all. It really pisses me off. How could someone be so despicable? Can't believe it. Mia felt she was at the brink of insanity as she read the comments. It was supposed to be Emma getting attacked today, not me, she thought. What spend? The color drained from her face and her whole body trembled. She was about to fall apart. Beside her, she could hear Nathan muttering into his phone, trying to work things out with the public relations team. Her own phone was in front of her, and with trembling hands, she picked it up and dialed Emma's number. She hesitated for a moment before pressing the call button. Emma, was it you? Did you do this to me? Mia, you've got it backwards, Emma replied calmly. You were the one who tried to frame me. No, it was you, Mia yelled. You need to come out and clear things up. This was all part of your plan. You wanted to destroy me. It was all because of you. Her voice was harsh and sharp, 
and her words were cruel. She was so angry, she wished she could tear Emma into pieces through the phone. However, Emma remained calm. Her composed attitude made it seem like she had everything in the palm of her hand, and she was just waiting to see Mia's fate. You knew this would happen, didn't you? Mia continued. Emma, I may be ruthless, but compared to me, you're even worse. I just did scheming behind your back, but you took things a step further. Mia, you should go see a doctor, Emma said flatly. Then she hung up the phone and turned her attention back to her email inbox, which was filled with new job offers and invitations. Emma couldn't be angered so easily. After all she had suffered from the Davis family, Mia's words meant nothing to her. She looked up at Lisa, who was dancing around the office with joy. So refreshing, Lisa cried. Madwoman tried to frame you, but hurt herself in the process. Let's see how she fares in the industry after this. We shouldn't celebrate too soon, Emma said. There's no line between good and evil in this business. If Mia wants to clear her name, she'll find a way. After all, there are plenty of agencies that hurt their own artists. They just don't get caught like she did. Lisa sat down. Have you forgotten something? she asked. Mr. Roberts hasn't responded yet. It's already been a few hours since the news broke. Why hasn't he said anything? Emma looked at her and giggled. When a cat catches a mouse, does he eat it right away? Or does he play with it for a while, making it fight for its life? Mia has tormented me for so long, Emma thought. If Eric didn't take this opportunity to get back at her, then he simply wouldn't be Eric. You're right, Lisa replied. As soon as he leaves the house, he becomes a king that no one can provoke. He's more calculating than anyone else in the business. Emma smiled. Her heart felt warm, as it always did when she thought about Eric. He made her feel protected and taken care of whenever they were together. And as Eric's lover, she would do anything for him. Em's prediction was right. At that moment, Mia was frozen in place in a state of complete panic. The online comments about her were still flooding in, and people were getting extremely angry. And yet, Kaleidoscope still hadn't released an official statement. Mia knew there were two possibilities. Either Eric didn't care about the issue and had no time to respond to a small manager's schemes, or he was busy preparing something big. Inside, Mia was leaning toward the first option. After all, she wasn't the first person to use Eric's name to create hype. He couldn't possibly have the time to deal with each and every publicity seeker. She felt that as long as Kaleidoscope didn't react, she would still have the chance to redeem herself. The industry would move on, and her misdeeds would be forgotten. That's right, she thought. I can't give up hope yet. Who knows if the situation will change? But even as she was telling herself that she still had a chance to escape a horrible fate, Kaleidoscope's PR team finally released a statement and it instantly became the subject of every headline. Episode 73, The Fateful Statement It was only a few simple words. We at Kaleidoscope Entertainment will use all our power to blacklist Mia Davis from any form of work in the entertainment industry, domestically and internationally. Anyone who dares to work with her will be going against Kaleidoscope and will be encouraging unethical practices in the industry. Furthermore, after speaking with the media company involved, we have concluded that Global's model, Emma Miller, was not involved in the publicity stunt. In order to restore all artists' faith in this situation, Kaleidoscope hereby acknowledges Miss Miller's innocence as proven by the audio and visual evidence presented. As soon as the statement was released, the entire industry was shaken up. Kaleidoscope had never responded to a situation like this so seriously. 
The fact that Mia was completely blacklisted meant she could no longer survive in the entertainment world, no matter what role she was willing to take on. The public assumed Eric was punishing Mia as an example to others in the business, going to great lengths to warn them that anyone who dared to use him for self-promotion would be digging their own grave. Of course, to the public, his message simply made for exciting news. Members of the entertainment industry, on the other hand, were trembling in fear at what he had done. It was obvious how Eric had managed to interrupt Mia's plan. All of the main media sources were under Kaleidoscope's control. If anyone tried to spread lies about Eric or his company, he would be able to uncover the truth and send the culprit to a place beyond redemption. With the release of this statement, Mia's career was completely over. Everyone thought that Kaleidoscope was being fair by targeting just Mia and not Global Pictures as a whole. But deep down, Emma knew it was because she was still under contract with Global. If Eric had blacklisted all of Global, her career would have suffered too. He really does take everything into consideration, she thought. Everything he does, he does with me in mind. Comments on Kaleidoscope's statement began pouring in online. Kaleidoscope is the top entertainment agency for a reason. They're quick, precise, and firm in their decisions. So cool. That's why so many people will do anything to work for Kaleidoscope. They've really given a fair take on the situation. Not only did they punish Mia, they also proved Emma's innocence to see a big company act with integrity. They're noble and classy. I have faith in Emma. If she was the type to pull stunts like that, she couldn't have endured all that Global did to her so gracefully. I am suddenly so in love with Emma. She's the perfect combination of talent and beauty. She's a lot of character. Mia is the worst. Kaleidoscope did good by putting an end to her unethical practices in the entertainment industry. Die, Mia. In an instant, Kaleidoscope's statement was on the front page of all entertainment news sources. On top of that, many famous personalities spoke out in support of Emma and Kaleidoscope. But Mia's torment didn't end there. Someone online revealed that she had been blacklisted in Mexico, as well as a few other scandals she'd previously been involved in. Anyone who had ever worked with her took the opportunity to attack her, hitting her while she was down. Mia locked herself in her office and didn't come out for the rest of the day. From the moment Kaleidoscope released its statement, she knew she had no hope of working in the entertainment industry ever again. She had been completely destroyed. She hid in a dark corner behind her desk, not eating or drinking but it felt like her ears still rang with the noise of the outside world because she knew there were a lot of people out there who wanted her dead. Mia, are you in there? Nathan asked worriedly as he knocked on her door. You haven't eaten all day. Come out before you make yourself sick. If you can't be a manager anymore, you can find something else to do. Don't give up hope. It's destroyed. Everything is destroyed. She mumbled. The Davis family had never been rich. If she changed careers now, she would have to leave her tailor-made clothes and limited edition handbags behind and start over from the bottom. If I can't be a manager, she thought, I'll have to go back to being a nobody. But how could I possibly do that? But wait, I can still plead with Emma. Mia seemed to have found her last glimmer of hope as she searched frantically around her desk for her phone. She found it and quickly placed a call. Emma, she said. Emma, I, I want to see you. If you have something you need to tell me, say it over the phone, Emma replied straightforwardly. Please, I'm begging you. Just put in a few good words to help me out of this. I don't want to leave the entertainment industry. I really don't. Mia had finally removed her arrogant mask and was allowing her desperation to show. I know I was wrong. I shouldn't have kept scheming against you. 
I will get down on my knees for you, Emma. Can you please give me a chance to survive? Emma laughed gently and asked, <laughs> If I were the one who'd been exposed this morning and Kaleidoscope had decided to blacklist me, what would you have done? Would you have taken advantage of the situation and frozen my jobs? Or would you have used the opportunity to debut your newcomer while showing me the door? Mia, right now, you're only admitting to your wrongdoings because you're not happy with the outcome. You don't really feel any regret. You just feel it's unfair that you couldn't take me down. But all that you've done to me has now been paid for. From now on, we don't owe each other anything. Of course, this is only if you remain honest. Mia responded with silence. She knew everything Emma said was true. If Emma were the one being blacklisted by Kaleidoscope, Mia would have had someone mess around with her and then kick her out of the company. And she would have done it without feeling even the slightest bit of sympathy. She couldn't think of a single reason Emma would want to help her. All she could do now was drown her sorrow. I never imagined I would fall this hard and be hurt this bad, she thought as she left the office alone and made her way to find the bar. Mia ended up getting quite drunk that night. A few of the men at the bar had taken an interest in her, and one of them almost convinced her to go home with him. Luckily, Nathan showed up just in time to stop him. Or else being blacklisted wouldn't have been the worst thing to happen to Mia that night. Mia, you should go to England tomorrow. Nathan said as they left the bar. I've already booked a flight for you. You want to get rid of me too? Mia sneered. She grabbed onto Nathan's shirt for balance as they walked. You afraid of being dragged down with me, aren't you? I'm sorry, but I have to look at the big picture. Tomorrow, the company will announce you've been removed from your role. Mia pushed Nathan away. Don't make yourself sound so high and mighty really care about the big picture. Everyone says I'm ruthless, but you, Nathan, are even worse. You use the people around you, and then as soon as something goes wrong, you turn your back on them like you don't know them. Do you really think Global can just get rid of me and return to business as usual? Let me tell you something. By blacklisting me, Kaleidoscope has indirectly blacklisted Global, too. The only person to come out on top here is Emma. She's the only one who hasn't been affected at all. I should have known better, Nathan. Emma was with you for years, and you dumped her just like that. I thought that, as your sister, I would have been treated differently. But it turns out I'm not as important to you as your prophet. Do you think, now that I've fallen, Emma will just let you and Amber go free? I'm not leaving New York. Not yet. I want to witness both your fates first. Episode 74 From the Heart What Mia had said was indeed the truth. When her plan to frame Emma failed, the person who benefited the most was Emma herself, followed by Kaleidoscope Entertainment. After Kaleidoscope mentioned Emma in its statement, her fame increased dramatically, and she even had more fans than before. At the same time, Kaleidoscope had confirmed its status as the best agency in the industry. Emma returned home that night to find Luke pacing back and forth outside the front door. She looked at him curiously. Luke, why aren't you going inside? she asked. Luke's eyes lit up as if he just found his savior. Miss Miller, you're back. What's wrong? Mr. Roberts isn't in a very good mood today, Luke explained. Why? She looked at him and realized he was afraid of saying too much and getting in trouble with Eric. Don't worry, she assured him. You can tell me. I'll handle the matter carefully. It's because of Kaleidoscope's statement, he explained. There was a disagreement. The higher-ups felt it was unnecessary to mention your name and give you the exposure. Of course, they weren't brave enough to stop the CEO, but... Emma's heart sank. She understood what Luke was trying to say. It's okay. 
she said. I'll comfort him. Even a small company like Global has its power struggles, she thought, and a company the side of Kaleidoscope must have it even worse. Eric's authority is obviously being questioned, and I'm the reason for it. After Luke left, Emma calmed herself down and went inside. She found Eric standing in his study, looking out the window and drinking a glass of wine. She approached him and reached out gently to hug him from behind. Mr. Robert, you look upset, she said. Did Luke say something, he guessed. It's not a big deal, nothing to be upset about. Eric, I'm your wife, she said, so it's normal for you to be biased towards me. But as far as your staff knows, I'm not related to you at all, so of course they would have a different opinion. That's not the main issue, he replied. He turned around put down his wine glass, and wrapped her in his embrace. Is someone trying to challenge your authority? The thought of this made her hug him tighter. You know as well as anyone how many people are eyeing your position. Why did you help me in such a high-profile way, Eric? I won't let you do this again. This time, it only made you unhappy. But what about next time? I know you had the incident with Mia all planned out. You've been waiting for the opportunity for a long time, and the photo at the Bright Night Gala was it. But it wasn't necessary for you to prove my innocence in your statement. Don't do something like this again. Are you saying that I meddled in your business? He asked, looking slightly disappointed. She froze for a moment before grabbing his hand and placing it over her heart. She looked at him seriously as she spoke. It hurts here, Eric. Everyone knows you're like a king beyond anyone's reach. But I know that behind you is an abyss waiting for you to fall into it. I'm not worthy of all this attention yet. I'll only be able to accept your help once I've earned my place in the business. The entertainment industry is a dark place. I can't let you protect me as if I deserve it. And if people are attacking you... I can't just sit still, so can't I at least protect your heart? Eric was stunned for a moment after she spoke, but it only lasted a second before he held her face in one hand, grabbed her around the waist with the other, and kissed her passionately on the lips. His love for Emma was growing so strong that he suddenly felt that their souls were connected. This thought made him hold onto her even tighter and he kissed her until her lips were red and swollen. After releasing her, he resumed his usual confident manner and said, I feel like I should thank those old dirtbags back at the office for giving me a chance to hear these words from your heart. But Emma, you've underestimated your husband. In this industry, there's nothing I can't do. Do you think anyone who challenges the king's power could actually succeed? She looked confused. Then why were you upset? You've been tricked by Luke, he replied, slightly amused. Emma froze. Then she smiled and said, I'm still glad he gave me a warning. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about the difficulties you're facing. Eric smiled as he lifted her up and carried her into the bathroom. I want you, he whispered. She blushed a little, but then began undoing Eric's shirt buttons. Seeing this, he couldn't help but thinking of the words she had just said. She wanted to protect his heart. He lifted Emma's gaze toward his and kissed her sensually. Not only must you protect my heart, he said. You must also protect my body. His pure white shirt was thrown to one side, along with her patterned A-line skirt. As one piece of clothing after another hit the floor, the couple only had each other in their eyes. A passionate fire had been ignited. Emma was a model, and every part of her body was important to her job. So Eric made sure to be gentle with her. She could sense his restraint. She grabbed onto his neck and said, I'm not made of porcelain. I won't shatter from a little force. 
is my wife telling me to use more force? He laid her down in the bathtub and satisfied all her needs. By the time they were finished, Emma was so tired she could barely keep her eyes open. He looked at her sleepy expression as he gently leaned over and gave her a kiss. Everything I do for you is worth it, he said. No matter what you want to do, I will be with you until the end of time. After the Davis siblings had their argument, Mia disappeared into her bedroom, while Nathan sat on the couch looking gloomy for the rest of the night. Amber, on the other hand, seemed unaffected. She didn't comfort Nathan like she normally did. Instead, she just minded her own business and read the news. He looked over at her. Amber, don't you think you've been acting a bit strange lately? Nathan, it's hard enough I have to carry this child around. Did you expect me to get involved in this fight between you and your sister? She looked at him in disdain. But I do feel you've made the right decision in giving up on her. After all, Global's being trampled on right now, thanks to Emma. Since Mia's been blacklisted by Kaleidoscope, you only did what a CEO should do in getting rid of her. How long has it been since we've been intimate? Nathan asked suddenly. He felt Amber had changed too much lately. In the past, she'd always clung to him and acted cute to get her way. But now, she was treating him like he didn't exist. Nathan, she said, the baby's growing. It's making me feel unwell. With his child in mind, he stopped questioning her. He simply stood up and went to the bathroom to take a cold shower. It's normal for a man to have his needs, he thought, but it's not normal for Amber to act this way. Episode 75, Amber's Raging Storm After the Bright Night Gala, Emma's fame increased dramatically once again, but her agency continued to hold her down. Global's higher-ups had reached their limit with Nathan. He couldn't suppress Emma, but he couldn't win her over either. He was more useless to them than the security guard at the front door and he was the reason Global had become such a foul company. A few shareholders expressed their intentions to withdraw their investments. They had lost hope in Global, and they mocked Nathan openly during their meeting with him. When Nathan returned to his office, he was so angry he smashed everything he could find. Every single bone in his body was filled with hatred for Emma. Moments later, the new models Mia had scouted arrived at the office to sign their contract. When Nathan saw Ariel, he immediately called her over to his desk. Have you ever done a runway show? He asked. Yes, I have, she replied respectfully. I was the winner of the model search competition. That's right, he thought. Mia discovered her at the model search competition. In that case, you won't require any training, Nathan said working up. A thought crossed his mind. Many clients that had existing contracts with Global had contacted him recently in hopes of working with Emma. Hence, in his hands were multiple job offers that Emma didn't know about. He decided to select one of them and recommend Ariel for it. If the client rejected the recommendation, he would simply cancel the contract, preventing Emma from ever working for them again. Ariel, he continued, I'll prepare a manager for you soon, and she'll help guide you. Thank you, Mr. David, she said, giving him a childish grin. Ariel was only 16 years old, so she couldn't be expected to be as mature as Emma. Seeing her smile, Nathan was a little taken aback. Many years ago, Emma had also been this easy to work with. But now, even the thought of Emma made him want to tear her to pieces. Looking at Ariel, he felt a mix of emotions. She was so similar to Emma that he couldn't help feeling angry when he saw her. But even so, he was determined to make her famous. He had to get her to imitate Emma so she could steal Emma's fame. That's all, he said. You may leave.
Amber had been listening in on their conversation from outside the office door. As soon as Ariel left, Amber stormed in and raged. Nathan, are you still planning to use this fake copy of Emma? I'm going to give Emma's clients to her and let her give them a try, he replied calmly. Emma may not have any big awards, but right now she has the same pull as an A-list model. Why are you giving such good clients to a newcomer who hasn't even officially debuted? Why don't you give them to me? Amber was becoming agitated. Don't you remember that I'll be getting an award soon? Not only that, I also have your child inside me. No matter what, you should always have my best interest in mind. That's enough, he said, standing up. When I met with the shareholders, they were already upset at how much favoritism I've shown you. She sneered at him. Nathan, you're so fake. Have you decided to dump your second woman now that you found someone younger? Your sister was right. You have no loyalty. And all you care about are profits. You would sacrifice anyone just to reach your goals. Nathan's expression showed a trace of ridicule. You have no right to say that to me, Amber. I sacrificed Emma for you. In that case, you should give Emma's clients to me, she shot back. He looked at her greedy face and realized she had no self-awareness at all. He suddenly felt like laughing. When will you be happy? He asked, smirking bitterly, when I'm fired from Global? Amber was dumbfounded. As the couple continued to argue loudly, neither of them noticed the tall figure who was eavesdropping from the door. A smug expression swept across her childish face before she walked downstairs to Emma's office and knocked on her door. Come in, Emma's voice resounded from the room. Emma stopped by the office every few days to see if her fans had left her any gifts and to check in on Global's decline. Ariel pushed open the door and walked inside. She had a timid expression on her face, and when she saw Emma's calm demeanor, she was lost for a moment before regaining her composure. My name's Ariel. I'm a new model who just signed on with Global. I remember you, Emma replied. She had made a deep impression on Emma during their first encounter. Emma knew that she was the substitute Nathan had found for her. Can I discuss a trade with you? Ariel asked. Are all teenagers this mature? Emma thought. She smiled at her. Tell me what your conditions are first. Actually, Mr. Davis has decided to give me one of your runway shows and the manager who was originally intended for you. But I know the client won't put me in the show without your recommendation. Since you have plenty of shows lined up, could you just give this one to me? I can report to you about Nathan and Amber whenever you want. No need, Emma replied calmly. I'm already used to Nathan's tricks. I know he wants you to replace me and steal my connections. Ariel was silent. She looked a little disappointed. You're still young, Ariel. I don't want you to get involved in adult matters. Of course, if you manage to secure the runway show yourself, that'll prove you're capable, and I won't stop you from taking it. All Emma shows and magazine appearances were now being arranged by Eric. Only people who weren't in the know were still contacting Global Pictures with job offers for her. These clients don't know me, she thought. They just want to work with me for the notoriety. What do I care if Ariel takes them? Ariel's eyes lit up. Thank you, Miss Miller, she said. Emma smiled, but she wasn't pleased. Ariel was young, but she clearly wasn't very innocent if she was already trying to use others for her own benefit. Emma decided she would sit back and watch what trouble this 16-year-old would cause. As soon as Ariel left, Amber stormed into Emma's office and glared at her in hatred. I can't believe you'd actually help the new girl, she seethed. Amber, you should be careful, Emma replied. Ariel is younger and more beautiful than you. If Nathan was willing to leave me for you, it means he could also leave you to be with her. Amber was heaving with rage. 
You must have had help to get where you are today, right? I've suspected it for a long time. All along. Things always been going your way. Don't tell me it's because you're talented. The CEO of Star Age told us he's tried to poach you multiple times. You don't look very clean to me. Acting all pure and innocent in front of other people. You accused me of bribing the judges. Well, what about you? What has the CEO of Star Age promised you? Tell me, is his bed soft? Episode 76, Personal Manager. Emma turned around. The nonchalant look of ridicule and disdain in her eyes was enough to cause others to tremble in fear. She wanted to say, not everyone is like you, but she found that she couldn't be bothered. She knew Amber would just find a way to twist her words. In the doorway, Nathan looked at the two in annoyance. He was especially hostile after hearing Amber's last words. Is it really because of star age that Emma has gotten where she is today, he thought? This bothered him, and he practically sneered at her. Come to my office. Emma stood and followed him into the other room. He sat down and leaned over his desk. Without looking at her, he asked, Is what Amber said true? Do you have a sexual relationship with the CEO of Star Age? No, I don't, Emma replied directly. How can you still lie to me? That night at the Bright Night Gala, the CEO told me personally that he tried to poach you multiple times in the past. Who would have thought that you'd act all innocent and pure in front of me, Emma? You even made me feel guilty. Well, since you believe everything that Amber says, why bother asking me? Her reaction was unfazed. She felt nothing towards Nathan. Great. That's just great, he said, throwing up his hands. All along you've been criticizing me and Amber, but it turns out you were actually the biggest cheater. He turned around and walked toward her, hatred in his eyes. He really wanted to know when she had started hooking up with the CEO of Star Age. Was it when we were still together, he wondered? Three years ago, Star Age had started scouting Emma. Three years. Well, I'd been desperately trying to keep Amber a secret from her. Slut. Although that word was something he'd wanted to say for a long time, it was the first time he had actually said it, right to Emma's face. Her eyes burned with disgust as she glared at him. Because of what you just said, I swear, I will destroy global pictures faster than you can blink. Just because Amber and Mia can't do anything to you, do you think I won't be able to either? In less than a month, I'll make sure you know what it feels like to lose everything. Nathan stared at her as she made her vow. He suddenly felt very small in comparison to her. After all their recent clashes, he knew Emma was not the type of person who gives up easily. She'd always managed to keep a low profile, which made it difficult to predict her next move. Every time he thought he had her figured out, she would somehow find a way to turn the tables. He'd begin to regret the words he'd said, but Emma had already started to walk away. How could I have called her a slut, he thought. He'd let his emotions take control. Downstairs, there were people from Star Age who had just arrived. The CEO came over to invite Emma to dinner. She refused, just as she'd done for the last three years. She didn't want to give him a chance. Sorry, Mr. Parker, I have my own car. He felt once again rejected as he watched Emma drive off into the distance and disappear around the corner. It was then that Ariel suddenly appeared out of nowhere. She jumped out, stretched out her arms, and blocked his way. She did look somewhat similar to Emma. If Emma doesn't want to go, can I go in her place? she asked. Ray Parker furrowed his brows in frustration. To jump out in front of his car? This girl was too much foolhardy. However, he couldn't deny that, although Ariel did not have the professionalism or elegance that Emma had, she was younger, which was a huge advantage. If they couldn't get Emma, then having Ariel wouldn't be a bad consolation prize. 
it would simply mean that they'd have to invest more in her earlier stages. He considered this option, although deep down, he still wanted Emma more. On the way home, Lisa noticed the lost expression on Emma's face. There was something very clearly wrong. She quickly asked, What happened, Emma? Did you have an argument with the slut and the jerk again? Slut. Hearing this word, Emma was reminded of what Nathan said earlier. It seemed she'd been far too gentle on global pictures. Luckily, the award ceremony was just around the corner. She would definitely destroy Amber this time. The past was in the past, but for what Nathan and Amber had done to her, she was going to make them pay. There would be no holding back. Lisa saw the dark look on Emma's face, so she stopped asking. She simply escorted her back to Tribeca and told her to get an early night's rest. After all, Top Trends Quarterly's magazine photo shoot was going to happen soon, so it was important for her to recharge her batteries. As she walked inside the apartment, she saw that Eric was already there. In front of him on the table sat a number of documents. As usual, they were all for her. Seeing Eric's charmingly handsome face, Emma took a deep breath. She already had such an amazing person by her side. She couldn't wish for everything to always go to plan, so she tried her best to calm her emotions after the day's events. What are you looking at? She asked as she sat down beside him. I'm helping you find a more suitable management agency, he explained. Although I can help you on the side, you still don't have anyone to represent you. After leaving Global Pictures, you need a better and stronger team. He placed some documents in front of her. Emma thought he would suggest that she join Star Age, but instead he placed the name H-World in front of her. Although H-World wasn't the leading entertainment agency and was still far from top agencies like Kaleidoscope and Star King, they were still considered an excellent company. On top of that, in terms of creating international supermodels, they had a lot of experience. Going to H-World seemed to be asking for a lot, considering Emma's current status. Has an appointment been arranged with H-World? No, you'll need to fight for it yourself. They will be holding auditions soon. When that time comes, I'll take you there to give it a try. Emma nodded. She never doubted Eric's decisions. Amber wanted to join Creative Century, while Ariel wanted to steal Star Age's offer from her, and yet Eric hadn't chosen either of them. Instead, he wanted Emma to join H-World Entertainment, who were on a much higher level than the other two. If they succeeded, the announcement would once again create utter chaos. Thinking about how thoughtful her husband was, Emma took his hand and intertwined their fingers. During the day, you deal with your own company's issues, and then, when you come home at night, you look through documents for me. Aren't you tired? No matter how worn out I am, I don't ever want to see you at a disadvantage. I can't allow my wife to suffer. He planted a kiss on Emma's lips. If it's like this, couldn't we say you're the one shaping my career? Thinking about how Eric had supported her behind the scenes all along, it wouldn't be unreasonable to think this way. Eric smiled. My dear wife, I'm just waiting to become your personal manager. Episode 77, Returning to the International Stage A personal manager. This was Emma's wish and goal. Looking at Eric's tired expression, she gently massaged his shoulders. As she felt his tense muscles, her heart ached. She recalled that she would be flying out to France in a couple of days. She immediately reminded Eric, In two days, I need to do a location shoot abroad. Would you like to come with me? Where is it? France. You've been so busy with work. I don't want you to be tired. Eric, let's make a pact. Whenever I need to go to another country, you'll come with me. Anywhere we go, we'll be there together. 
Eric was silent for a moment. He had flown all over the world, but it had always been for work. Not once did he ever think about slowing down and resting. Accompanying Emma abroad meant that he would be able to relax and take a break. More importantly, Emma was better to look at than the most beautiful scenery. Just the thought of being able to stay by her side and take care of her was a wonderful thing. So he nodded in agreement. Sounds good. I'll get Luke to make arrangements. Emma was delighted as she turned her attention back to H-World Entertainment's profile. Whether for Eric or herself, she was going to use every ounce of strength she had to fight for this opportunity. A few days after the incident with Mia, a huge scandal was released online about a young actor who'd been caught taking drugs. It quickly became the most talked about online topic. As the annual award ceremonies were approaching, it was normal for celebrities to leak information about their competitors to the media. The annual model awards were just around the corner. As one of the guest award presenters, Emma didn't need to be wary of people scheming against her. However, with Amber's arrogant and overbearing attitude, it was certain she would make a move after knowing she'd receive an award. Emma, do you remember what day it is today? Lisa asked on the way to TTQ's headquarters. Emma flipped through the magazine in her hands and responded without lifting her head. Nathan's birthday. Do you do anything? Lisa asked. I'd rather donate money to charity, Emma replied calmly. She had said some harsh words to Nathan the day before. He probably thought it was a joke, but he had no idea that the award ceremony would be the end of Amber's career. You're right. Let's forget about it this year, Lisa said and laughed. Thinking about how Emma had worked her fingers to the bone to celebrate Nathan's birthday in previous years, only to be betrayed by him broke Lisa's heart. Luckily, Emma had learned the truth and seen the light. Another thing to consider, Lisa began, Global Pictures definitely won't survive, so your contract will soon be canceled. What do you plan on doing? I heard the newcomer that Nathan hired has stabbed you in the back and stolen your contract at Star Age. Emma, what are you and Eric planning to do? Are you going to sign with Star Age or Creative Century? Neither, Emma replied calmly. Eric wants me to go to H-World. Lisa was stunned for a moment before smiling. If he has faith in you, then so do I. Speaking of companies that Ariel and Amber have their eyes on, Eric has already dismissed them. They can have them if they want. It's no loss to me. Emma continued to flip through the magazine. Lisa caught a glimpse of hardness in her eyes. These two women seemed very pleased with themselves, thinking they were so capable of stealing something from Emma. However, the truth was that what they'd stolen held no value to her. H-World Entertainment was where Emma wanted to go. She was a superstar to begin with, and it was only natural to set her sights on something even bigger. TTQ's magazine photo shoot was scheduled to happen in two days, but CEO George Benedict had asked Emma to drop by the headquarters. Emma had a feeling she knew why he called her. However, when George actually announced to her that she'd been invited to attend a fashion show in France and walk down the runway during the opening of Luxury's collection, she was so surprised she froze in place. Emma, for the October front cover, I'm planning to take a photo of one of your poses from the show, he told her. This is a huge opportunity for you. It will really help you with your return to the international stage. That low-profile manager of yours is the one who suggested it. I believe he's right. You do indeed have the ability, so I decided to recommend you. We could treat this as a way for me to fulfill the promise I made to the media at the Bright Night Gala. Emma stared at George. She was speechless. She knew TTQ's shoot would be the major turning point in her career's comeback, and it was all because of Eric. There's no need to get emotional, said George. If you want to thank me, then show me how professional you can be. 
Only the best models are worthy of the best resources. Emma held back her tears as she gave him a hug and nodded. I definitely won't disappoint you. Your current agency is a mess, so I decided to keep this news under wraps for now, he said. Thank you, sir, Emma replied. The phrase, hard work pays off, suits you well, he added. She smiled in response, feeling extremely grateful toward him. She'd always been the type to seek revenge when it was needed, but also to show gratitude where required. Returning to the international stage was something Emma didn't dare to dream about, but now the opportunity had arisen. While Amber was wasting her time seducing the judge, and Ariel was thinking of ways to entice the CEO of Star Age, Emma had secured a critical chess piece in the game. Of course, this was all because of Eric, who loved her and spoiled her. She was hardworking, but she was also lucky because she had married the best husband in the world. Nathan had no idea Emma would once again rise to the top. In the Global Pictures office, he was watching the video of Ariel's runway walk that she'd filmed for her interview. The job had originally been intended for Emma, but the client didn't seem upset. From the looks of it, they were quite satisfied with Ariel. Amber sat beside him and scoffed. Ariel's a nobody, she thought. How can she possibly take Emma's job and get everyone's attention in global pictures? Nathan turned to the woman beside him and asked, Amber, do you know what day it is tomorrow? She thought carefully and began to get anxious. She had an arrangement the next day to secretly meet the judge, Mark Whitaker. Why is Nathan asking this, she wondered. Does he know? No, that can't be possible. If he knew, he wouldn't be asking me in this tone of voice. Nathan, you should be aware that my pregnancy has been affecting me really badly lately, Amber reported, using their child as a shield. I've been having the worst memory loss. Why don't you just tell me? Tomorrow night, I reserved a room for us at the Champagne Hotel, he said. We can celebrate there. The Champagne Hotel? Amber was suddenly nervous. That was the place where she previously had an affair with Mr. Whitaker, and they also had a room reserved there the next day. She was so worried about being discovered that she'd completely forgotten about Nathan's birthday. Episode 78, Catching the Cheaters The following morning, as Nathan and Amber entered the office, they were greeted by a mountain of presents sitting on Nathan's desk. Amber glanced around and realized she had forgotten Nathan's birthday. For his previous birthday, she'd always planned something special to keep him with her for as long as possible. So Emma would be left waiting around stupidly. However, times had changed. After experiencing the exhilaration of cheating, Amber realized she could no longer go back. Nathan, I've been feeling unwell the last few days, so I don't have a present for you, she said as she clung on to Nathan's shoulder and drew circles on his chest with her delicate fingers. She knew this was his weakness. As expected, Nathan took her right hand and responded in a forgiving tone. I know it's hard for you being pregnant, but tonight you can make it up to me. Nathan's vague words passed through her ear. At the same time, she could also feel his hot breath tickling her earlobe. Amber smiled shyly as she nodded. Okay. They'd been together for a few years, so she couldn't possibly disregard him completely. But thinking that Emma may take this opportunity to take him back, she felt like she had to protect her pride. Even if she didn't want him, she couldn't let Emma have him. Therefore, she decided she would cancel the meeting with Mr. Whitaker and spend the night with Nathan instead. Nathan, do you think any of these presents are from Emma? she asked. In truth, Nathan was already wondering this and asked himself, does Emma still care about my birthday? In past years, she'd always put her whole heart into getting a present for him. But he's always ended up spending the night with Amber, making Emma wait the whole night by herself. 
At the time, he thought Emma would always be like that, right in the palm of his hand. Let me take a look. Amber was determined to humiliate Emma as she searched through the presents. However, she was disappointed to find nothing. It seems the slut finally learned to behave herself. But Nathan, it's been a while since we've had a meal with the staff. Why don't we ask Emma to join us for lunch? He understood her intentions and furrowed his brows. In the end, he just nodded in agreement. You give her a call then. She flashed him an innocent smile before snatching the phone from his pocket and dialing Emma's number. Emma, it's Nathan's birthday today. We're having a staff lunch. Will you join us? Amber asked with a winning attitude. She felt proud to be using Nathan's phone to call her. Oh, Emma's busy, Lisa's voice responded on the other end of the phone. She's currently filming something for TTQ. Is she busy, or is she just not brave enough to attend? Miss Lee, I know you're desperate for Emma to see your live show of affection. Emma does not have time to attend so-and-so's birthday. You may not have any work, but her schedule is full. You! Lisa scoffed as she hung up the phone. She couldn't be bothered wasting any more time talking with Amber. Emma noticed Lisa grinning at her, and she returned the smile. This would be Global Pictures' final celebration. Night came around, and Nathan and Amber staggered into the Champagne Hotel arm in arm. Nathan had blacked out from drinking too much. After laying him on the bed, Amber started to unbutton his shirt. Just then, she received a phone call from Mr. Whitaker. Amber anxiously ran into the bathroom to answer. Mark, didn't we agree that tonight was canceled? Well, do you still want Creative Century's contract? He responded threateningly. I'm in room 29 on the 30th floor. Amber's heart began to race at the mention of Creative Century. This was the opportunity she'd been waiting for. She couldn't let it go. After all, Nathan was completely drunk. He probably wouldn't even notice she was gone. After weighing the pros and cons, Amber made her decision. She managed to settle Nathan into bed before catching the elevator up to the 30th floor. However, she never would have imagined that Nathan would actually wake up in the middle of the night. Realizing Amber wasn't in the room, he sat up immediately and rang her phone. She didn't pick up. It was the middle of the night. Where could she have gone, he thought. He ran downstairs and ended up questioning the receptionist. He even checked with the security room, afraid that Amber might have been in danger. However, after the hotel staff showed him the security footage, he realized Amber had gone to the 30th floor and headed into room 29. Mr. Davis, do you want us to send someone with you? The security guards asked him. No, it's okay. Nathan felt a sick feeling in his stomach. Although he hadn't witnessed it himself, he could already guess what was going on. He clenched his fist tightly so no one else could see. Normally, the hotel staff respected their guests' privacy. Footage like this was quite common, but they never dared to expose it. However, this man had practically caught his partner in the act. Everyone looked at Nathan with pity. The feeling of humiliation ripped through his heart. Mr. Davis... Are you okay? One of the staff asked. Nathan's face was pale and his legs felt weak. However, he maintained his calm demeanor as he stepped out of the monitoring room and boarded the elevator up to the 30th floor. His thoughts were so clouded with anger that he didn't even remember knocking on the door of room 29. He pretended to be a staff member until the door opened and Amber stood in the doorway wearing just her nightgown. Upon seeing her, he slapped her square across the face like a lion unleashing its anger. She fell to the ground in shock. Meanwhile, the man she was having an affair with was lying sideways on the bed, sound asleep. Nathan, Nathan, don't hurt him. You can't hurt him. She held onto his arm and pushed him out of the room before closing the door behind her. Go away, 
Nathan shoved her off him. Then he spun around, and his tall figure quickly disappeared at the end of the red carpeted hallway. Amber collapsed. She felt a sense of dread and fear as she trembled. Everything had been happening too quickly and too suddenly. A while later, the door opened, and Mr. Whitaker stepped out. He helped Amber to her feet and back into the room. After she explained what happened, he scoffed. What do you need a man like that for? He asked her. You'll be leaving Global Pictures soon, and you'll be the winner of a Top Ten Model Award. Who cares if your relationship is destroyed in the process? As for Emma, she's so arrogant. Do you really think she can go on like this? Sooner or later, you'll stomp all over her. Hearing these words of comfort, Amber began to calm down. Mark spoke the truth. Nathan, you should be blaming yourself for being useless, not me for being heartless. But he has some important evidence against me, she pointed out. So what? If he exposes it, it won't benefit him either. If he's smart enough, he'll keep his mouth shut, Mr. Whitaker sneered. To be absolutely certain, he got someone to erase the surveillance footage from the hotel later that night. Episode 79, Standing Together After leaving the hotel, Nathan dragged his heavy body through the street. This is how it felt to be betrayed. A thousand emotions coursed through his veins. He felt anger, embarrassment, shame and a lack of control. He'd given up everything for Amber. He'd even broken up with Emma. In the end, what he'd gotten in return was catching Amber in bed with someone else. He felt that she'd played with his heart. Back when Emma first discovered that he was cheating on her with Amber, this is how she must have felt. He wanted to crush Amber in his hands. He wanted to skin her and break her bones. However, even if he did all that, it would still not be enough to dampen his hatred. He'd already given her everything and sacrificed so much of himself. He had thrown away Emma and abandoned Mia. He'd done everything he could to help her succeed. And in the end, he'd found her in bed with another man. The indescribable pain was rooted deeply in his heart. It fed into his anger and a mix of other emotions, threatening to swallow him whole. Three years of love had ended in nothing. He had once treated Emma the same way. Thinking of her, Nathan remembered all the humiliation and torture he put her through. If this was meant to be the most painful form of karma, he was already at his breaking point. He'd rather die than suffer like this. He kneeled on the ground in defeat. He refused to feel this level of humiliation ever again. In the end, he chose to give Emma a call. In a calm voice, he said, Emma, can you come back? On the other end of the phone, Emma was packing her and Eric's luggage. Hearing Nathan's question, she was slightly stunned. What do you mean? Come back to me. I'll give you everything. Emma stopped what she was doing. Her eyes shone with disdain that Nathan could not see. If I want something, I can get it myself. I don't need you. If that's it, Nathan, I'll hang up first. Can't you stay at Global Pictures? He asked. Emma hung up the phone without responding and continued to pack her suitcase. She could roughly guess what must have happened between Amber and Nathan. In the past, she thought she would have looked forward to this day, but this wasn't the result she wanted. Nathan wanted her to come back, not because he was truly sorry, but because he was probably experiencing a similar kind of betrayal that she had. A little while later, Eric packed away his documents and headed into the bedroom. Seeing Emma standing beside the bed in a daze, he reached out his arms and hugged her. Sorry I've been working so late. She returned his embrace, soaking in the warmth from his body. I know you're trying to make time to go overseas with me. What's wrong? he asked. Eric noticed a slight change in her voice. 
They had developed an understanding between each other over time. Although Emma didn't speak much, he could still sense a shift in her emotions simply by looking at her. I think Nathan and Amber have broken up, and I've just realized something. I've been thinking about whether I've done all of this to seek revenge on them, or to do something for myself. I understand now that it's crucial to make them face the consequences of their actions, but more importantly, I want to be standing next to you, on your level. Eric gently stroked her dark hair before carrying her over to the bed. Good, he said. Now close your eyes. We'll be going overseas tomorrow, and don't worry, I'll always keep you company. She closed her eyes and fell asleep peacefully in his arms. She knew that the day they returned home from abroad would be the day she'd take care of Amber once and for all. Early the following morning, before Emma had even boarded the plane, Creative Century leaked the news that they had actually been going after a different model in Global Pictures, not Emma. Everyone assumed that Creative Century was only saying this because they'd been repeatedly rejected by Emma, and this was their only way to save their pride. As for the other model they mentioned, it couldn't be anyone else but Amber. Is Amber about to make a comeback, they wondered? Had she stolen a big contract from Emma? Netizen snorted in contempt, posting comments like, Slut, she's not worthy of it. They didn't think Amber's personality deserved any high praise. If Creative Century were really going to be working with her, then it wasn't difficult to imagine how many contracts and schemes she'd used, or even how many higher-ups she'd slept with. However, these negative reactions didn't stop Amber from being the most popular topic online. Emma, do you want me to investigate what happened? Lisa asked, looking at the news in discomfort. No matter what Amber wanted to do, it was her own business. However, the fact that she'd used Emma to create publicity disgusted Lisa. This may have happened for a reason, Emma responded. I have a feeling that Nathan and Amber have broken up. If I'm right, keep an eye on Amber. She might choose to get an abortion. We have to make sure she at least keeps it until the award ceremony. Lisa froze for a moment before nodding. I understand. I'll see what I could do about it. It doesn't matter what her relationship with Nathan is, said Emma. Since she owes me, I'll definitely make her pay. Meanwhile, Nathan had also seen the news online. His handsome face parted. It seemed like Amber really had slept with a big shot. No wonder she managed to secure a top ten model award. She also got the opportunity to join Creative Century. Does she want to just leave me like this, he thought, as if it'll be that easy? Just as he was about to take action, Amber threw open his office door and entered. She looked exhausted, her eyes red and swollen. Why are you here? Nathan's voice was a little hoarse, like he was trying to restrain himself. I'm here to beg your forgiveness. Amber suddenly started shedding tears as she stared at him with pity. I really had no choice. That man had his eyes set on me. He used you in Global Pictures to blackmail me. I could do anything. Can you give me five minutes to explain? He looked at her in disbelief, like he was staring at an enemy. Do you really think I still trust anything you have to say? You already hook up with Creative Century? What? Do you still have any interest in my small company? Amber, you really disgust me. Realizing that Nathan was not going to budge at all, she immediately dried her tears and laughed coldly. <laughs> you can't blame anyone for this but yourself. If you'd been able to protect me and get rid of Emma, I wouldn't have had to go down this path. I've been your lover for three years, said Nathan. But what have you given me? She asked. All you've given me is failure, Nathan. Don't forget that I'm still carrying your child. And what do you plan on doing about this child? He asked. Episode 80 
outdated model. Amber wanted to force Nathan into suggesting she get an abortion so that he'd be the one to give up on their relationship. She was well aware that after being with Nathan for so many years, it would be impossible to end things completely. Everything that was once a secret had suddenly turned into something he could use against her. If he were to spill anything, there would be no going back. Nathan looked at her quietly with intense eyes, as if he could see through to her soul. Of course I think you should give birth to it, he said. I've already given up so much for this child. Do you think I would abandon it so easily? Amber, let me tell you that if you dare abort my child, I'll do everything in my power to destroy your career. His words were deep and sinister, carrying a clear threat. If Amber wanted to separate herself from him in global pictures, it wasn't going to be that easy. She gaped at him, dumbfounded. Judging by Nathan's temper, she thought there'd be no way he would accept this child's existence. She never expected he'd be asking her to keep it. If I have this baby, she thought, how will I be able to sign with Creative Century? The news about her changing agencies has already spread like wildfire. If she couldn't get rid of this child, she didn't know how she would explain it to Mr. Whitaker. Nathan stared at the speechless woman in front of him, and the corners of his lips curled up. There was no way he would let her retreat in one piece after she betrayed him. He was going to wait and see what other disgusting things she would do now that she was at the point of no return. Thinking of this situation reminded him once again of Emma, how she'd felt and her state of mind in that moment of discovery. He felt like he finally understood it completely. Being betrayed by someone could make you heartless, wishing for the other person to be destroyed. After some thought, Nathan pulled out his phone and made a call to Lisa right in front of Amber's eyes. Give me Emma's schedule, he demanded. I'm booking a flight to France tonight. On the other end of the phone, Lisa froze, thinking, Nathan actually wants to come to France? Maybe he wants to resolve things with Emma. At Lisa's lack of response, Nathan's voice turned cold, and he spoke more aggressively. Lisa. I'm still the CEO of Global Pictures, and Emma is still my model. I have the right to know what she's up to. In truth, Emma had already heard the words resounding from Lisa's phone. Send it to him, she said. But... Lisa started to protest. Emma shook her head in response, reminding Lisa that there was no need to clash with Nathan. Lisa nodded as she unwillingly replied, I'll text it to you. Afterwards, she hung up and looked at Emma in confusion. You're supposed to keep Eric company, she said. Why did you agree to Nathan coming over to France? Couldn't you tell? Emma explained as she unpacked Eric's clothes. Amber was with him. He just wanted to spite her. With everything that's going on with Creative Century, do you really think he'd actually come? Don't worry. Besides, we aren't even staying in that hotel we originally booked. After her clarification, Lisa relaxed and sent over the schedule to Nathan. Okay, I'll pick you up tomorrow morning. I'll leave you and Eric to warm each other up in the meantime. Lisa winked as she left the room and returned to the hotel TTQ had organized. A while later, Eric emerged from the shower after washing himself from head to toe, wearing only a pure white towel. Emma quickly stood up to help him dry his hair. She held on to him gently and tenderly as she asked, Did you want to sleep, or would you like to go for a walk with me to the beach and watch the sunrise? I definitely want to see the sunrise, Eric responded softly. In truth, since becoming the CEO of Kaleidoscope, he had never felt so relaxed. It was all thanks to Emma, who had refused to let him bring along any work. 
She smiled as she pulled out a fresh set of clothes and helped him change, before taking his hand and intertwining their fingers. They were staying in a beachside villa, their surroundings calm and peaceful. Unlike her usual image as a model, Emma wore a yellow A-line dress with a straw hat, a camera hanging around her neck. Eric had his arm wrapped around her shoulders the whole time they walked barefoot toward the beach. The sounds of the crashing waves passed over them as they stepped onto the sand. There was a glow emanating from the distant horizon. The couple sat down together, side by side, and turned to admire each other. Emma couldn't help but hold up her camera and take a photo of Eric's profile as he watched the skyline. He angled his head and smiled, reaching out his arm and pulling her toward him before grabbing the camera and taking a selfie. I can't keep this photo, can I? If the paparazzi discover this. Emma trailed off, looking at the photo regretfully. Of course you can keep it. He held her chin as he kissed her passionately. This is our new memory. Be careful, there are people around. At this time of day, where would you possibly find anyone? He looked at her in amusement as he once again pulled her in for a kiss, their tongues dancing together while their hearts filled with an indescribable tenderness. Watching the sunrise with the person they loved and walking along the beach together made the whole world around them stand still. If only the sunrise would last longer. Unfortunately, luxury show was taking place that morning. As the opening model, Emma played a crucial role. So the couple ended their romantic time on the beach, and she freshened up before heading over to the venue. Looking at all the unfamiliar faces, she was suddenly reminded of when she was 18 years old and working hard in France. She felt nervous as usual but she was no longer that inexperienced little girl. She calmed herself, and her relaxed demeanor really impressed the makeup artist. Luxury show is filled with newcomers. You're the only one who doesn't look terrified. Emma smiled as she turned to glance at the other models. Oh, yeah, the makeup artist continued. The opening was originally meant to be done by a different model, but because she was too nervous, they ended up replacing her with you. She's over there. The makeup artist nodded her chin to the right, gesturing for Emma to look over. Sitting on a sofa nearby, looking defeated, was a young girl in her early 20s. She's now a substitute. Emma glanced at the model, but did not recognize her. She changed into her clothes and waited quietly in her chair. As she waited, she inspected herself in the mirror. This show would be her opportunity to secure an impressive portfolio before auditioning for H-World. It was extremely important to her. This show would determine whether she could triumph over Creative Century and Star Age and place herself above them. Luckily, Eric was also present. This made her feel warm just thinking about it. Not too far from Emma, a figure glared at her with pure hatred. The opening wasn't something she was willing to give up, but Emma had stolen it from her. She had immediately recognized Emma, as she'd been somewhat famous in New York lately. Fuming, she thought. What right does she have to steal someone else's job? She's just an old, outdated model from a small company. I hope you enjoyed the episodes. Thank you for listening. See you on the next episodes. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe.